Hey guys, welcome to the SPL Daily slash Weekly Recap, depending on when you're watching this one. Today we're going to be going over the first day of week two. My name's Gormizer. Joining me here, it's going to be Frog and Zapman, who has been coming in. We had already talked about the fact that I keep, and I think for you as well, keep forgetting and have like this cognitive dissonance that you're yeah, Ravens, yeah. not Leviathans. I've been Leviathans for so long. It's just, it's, <laughs> it's, it takes a little bit to get used to. I think it's also, you've got like the blue hat and it's yeah. just like the same blue as well. So like my brain's just auto-correcting for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but you got to play today. Actually, consequently, Leviathan's got to play today as well. Frog, we're going to go to you about that. Three to one over the Hounds. Leviathan's come out pretty strong at first. Couple of, uh, of speed bumps along the way from the Hounds, uh, but they still take the win. Yeah, I mean, I think the Leviathan's look pretty strong for the whole set. Really, only win from the Hounds was the four-man Thoralt on a ducky that was unkillable. So there's this like crazy sequence of events. But I, you know, I think it sums up in we we, we listen into the Glads and they the first thing you heard was what do we do on on the listening and. You listen to the Leviathans and they're actually calling targets and just W keying it down. So felt like a confident win. They uh, they, they definitely looked in control. Yeah, a couple of plays that that Thor dunk was still real good. I, I gotta like give play. him credit. That yep. was a real good win for him. The one was good, but. Uh, I think what everyone said in the back was, yeah, well, you got to hit those, right? If, if, if there's anyone that you're going to hit, that's the one. Uh, unfortunately for the Hounds, they still end up falling. Zap, though, you go in, come in as the Ravens, uh, and Hurry's interview said that it should be a pretty easy set for you guys. Uh, and then, as we saw at the end, it was a 3-0, pretty controlling. Uh, how did you feel about this set against the, the Gladiators? Uh, we felt good. We felt good coming in. We had a good game plan going in. We had a good week of scrims, which was important. And, uh, you know, that first week we went 0-6, but we uh, we were kind of just, like, feeling it through. Yeah. I, I felt a little uncomfortable because I haven't played in a bit. I hadn't scrimmed at all, like, that whole summer. Cause I, oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, it took me a little bit. You know, my first game I went 0-8 on all right? Yep. I was like, welcome back to the SPL. <laughs> like, bring back Barracuda right now after going 0-8. And, and I know, that, like, when it comes to, to this set specifically, and this has, like, been a common theme for teams you're on where, like, your KDA – is, I mean, obviously the 0-8 maybe stands out, but like you're never like this like 16 and two hard hyper carry. You're always you know at the like hey I went four and two or four and three, uh, and, and like in this case like Vin got to play a lot of different mages. So like how's it been like vibing with them and, and I guess enabling them for sets like this? Well, the only KDA I care about is three and zero at Worlds. You know that's the KDA that's, I yeah, care about. However you get there, that's what matters. You know what I mean? So. I like to discuss with my team and try to figure out how we want to play, what we want to do in team fights, and uh, and that's not necessarily the hunter carrying every game, but uh, I would say like let's say for season six and season eight worlds, uh, I did a lot on the hunters, and like season seven I was just yeah. dying for Paul, like that was just <laughs> that was just our strategy. You saw it all. Season seven was double blink thorns. The hunters not doing anything into double blink thorns. So anyway, bottom line is is that this year we're just, we're it's a brand new team. I haven't teamed with yeah. any of these guys except for Haddocks, which is kind of new for me because I've been around for a long time. I've teamed with a lot of people. So uh, it's pretty exciting to team with someone like Scream, who's like a, a cool personality, yeah. very unique individual. And uh, Tyler's a really, really, really uh, interesting guy as well. And, and Ven too. So I've been really enjoying just being around those guys and getting to know them better. And, uh, you know, we've already gone out for drinks and stuff like that, you know, doing that team bonding and everything. So, um, yeah, I mean, this week we just had, uh, you know, a full week of scrims and just, you know, talking to each other, figuring out picks and bands, what, what kind of play style you like, how do we want to adjust, maybe a um, uh, little play style here, or maybe, you know, I'll tell Ben I'll die for you, you know, maybe, maybe he's not used to hearing that, you know, I'm like, Ben, Ben, play behind me, I got you, you know. Just, you know, uh, we're just trying to get comfortable with each other and the, it's the ramp up to worlds. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't matter how you start. It's how you, how, how you are when you get to worlds, when you get to the big show. And that's what we're really aiming for. Do you have any like big thoughts about this set specifically? Like things that went well for you? Oh yeah. This set, I would say we played mostly discipline. We're really trying to cut out some of those kind of just dumb deaths. We like to call them, you know, I think me and Tyler died a couple of times for no reason when they're making plays in solo side. And um, that was, that was our big focus too. And another big focus too is uh, just like Ben, to uh, play a little more selfish, be a little bit more of that carry mindset. You know, he I barely died. He was making plays left and right. And um, we did that today, and we played, I would say, relatively clean smite. There you go. And sometimes that's all you can ask for, right? You got to get in and just play to the best of your ability. That's just the first two of a long week that's ahead of us. So if you're watching this uh, in the morning, then get ready for some more Smite. And if you're watching this for the full recap, make sure you catch everything on youtube.com slash SmiteVOD and continue to watch our content across all, whether it's Twitch, YouTube, or wherever you happen to find us. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me. And we'll see you.
It is a beautiful morning in Sacramento, California. Just the morning to watch some SPL action. That's what we've got week two, day two of the SPL phase two. You've got Frog, you've got Trelly. How you doing? I'm great, but I'm not in Sacramento, California. I checked. The weather's good. <laughs> okay. I made sure to I made sure to check. Uh, because I've said it, I mean it's a beautiful morning here in Alpharetta as right. well. Um, but no, week two, phase two, uh, day two of the SPL. We've got our schedule. We had some fantastic matches yesterday, and we've got some fantastic matches today as well. Perhaps some uh, some heavy hitters today, Trelly. The Oni Warriors going up against the Atlantis Leviathans. Oni Warriors looking to continue that win streak. And the Highland Ravens going up against the Dragons. Saw the Ravens grab their first win yesterday. Dragons looking to continue on that streak if they if they can. I believe they also won their last set. So should be uh, should be some good matches, potentially some close ones today. Yeah, no doubt. We got to talk a little bit about this matchup in waiting room. And I will say that the casting predictions were a little bit split. So uh, should be an interesting one. The Oni Warriors and Leviathans. If we can take a look at the standings as well, this will include the matches that we saw yesterday. You can see there the Highland Ravens grabbed their first win, going up against the Jade Dragons, so both teams looking for their second. And then the uh, the Oni Warriors, 2-0 in the phase thus far. The Atlantis Leviathans, the only other team with two wins thus far. And this is a cross-divisional matchup that we've got to start the day here. So they, these teams are only going to play each other once for the entire phase. It is this match right here could potentially be a lot on the line. I would say so. I mean, the Oni Warriors want to continue that streak, right? You never want a loss in that column if you can help it. And this is, if any team, the one that I would say is going to try and keep it the longest, right? They, they, they've got that win streak under their belt. They have a roster change, and now they're trying to continue that streak in this case. So should be an interesting one, no doubt. The Atlantis Leviathans, as far as I'm concerned, have a bit of a hill to climb, right? Because they've yeah. looked clean. They've definitely played a good brand of Smite. It's just been, you got to be playing lights out when you're going up against the Warriors. Yeah, you really do. I, I mean, one thing, definitely a positive note for them, the Leviathans, uh, one of two teams to take the Warriors to five mm -hmm. dur during that kickoff tournament. So they've definitely bled before, uh, and certainly this new pickup with genetics still trying to get their feet under them, although it, it really didn't take too long. <laughs> I, th I think that's the big difference maker, right? We talked about possibly having some growing pains, and we even get to interview Genetics, and when we talked to him, he was like, listen, guys, you may think that I was brought in to be this sort of leader, this in-game leader, but honestly, I'm just going with the flow. I I'm sure at some point, late game, he takes over in the shot calls, but it, it seems like a lot of just sitting back and sort of letting the team play. We've got a cool new graphic, this god pool look for the Oni Warriors, which I, I, I took a look at. I, I think, you know, obviously we, we've seen these players go deeper in the past. Of course, a lot of them have been in the SPL for a bit now, but these are the gods they've been playing primarily thus far in the Road to Worlds set. And I, uh, I'm i looking at Pele, or I'm looking at Pagon there in the center, and I'm seeing more assassins than mages, which is a, a, a trend we've seen across the league, but this this team in particular, Pagon looks really comfortable getting in there. Yeah, and I would say not showing too much of the god pool as well, right? We know that Pagon can play so many other characters, but at the moment, sticking to what he knows, I think that if you're not banning away those picks, he's going to grab them pretty much immediately. And he has the, the beauty of the Morgan pick, which is still very prominent at the moment, is if you don't get your hands on one of those game-changing assassins, you can simply turn into one, right? You don't <laughs> you don't have to worry about it, like, oh man, the enemy team locked in set or Pele. I can just be them. So certainly something that the Leviathans might have to look out for. A god pool is always going to come into question when you're talking about P's and B's. Yeah, I mean, we, we look across the board as well. Genetic's the one potentially going the deepest there. He's played five gods thus far. And I think he's the only one so far in the Road to Worlds that's pulled out this E-set support. We've seen maybe a couple other question marks on other mage supports. PBM pulled out the Aphrodite, the Giannis in, in that one game. Um, but really, the E-set e has really only been genetics, and I think he's only played it once or twice. And I'm glad, because I'm not the biggest fan of the E-set. <laughs> like, uh, if you're winning, that's great, but I, I think there's almost always better options available. E-set has had some pretty good counter matchups in lane. She's got decent clear. She's got the, the, the actual CC that can be so annoying. So I'm hoping we don't see it. But, you know, there, there's, always a, there's always a comp where it can work out. Well, they're going up against the Leviathans today. And uh, speaking of Leviathans, we actually have the coach on standby for an interview, Slaney, standing by. That's right, I've got Slaney standing here. And, and first and foremost, 
you guys made your swap right coming in. We were kind of curious about what the, the team was going to look at. And, and as the coach, especially from the, the back perspective, I want to know, because you've got a few sets under your belt against tough teams as well. And this one's not going to necessarily become any easier. So I'm just kind of curious where your mind is on the team. I mean, we're feeling good. I think in every set we've kind of had like small issues pop up, but I think one thing that's really good now is that we're always really aware of that. Um, and we're really open to feedback. So I think every all of these issues that we're noticing, we're kind of like squashing down pretty quickly. Um, so that, that feels pretty good. Um, obviously we've had a pretty, We've had some some tough opponents and some not so tough po tough opponents. Um, I actually think Hyres has an agenda of, against us because you look at our schedule. We play all the really bad teams on the first day of the week, and then the hard teams the second. You know, last week, terrible dragons, and then we have to play the Berryman. Yesterday we played the Hounds, and now we have to play the Oni Warriors. <laughs> I don't know, something against us here. I think. Yeah, it's all, all all planned and plotted. It's it's for your downfall. I, I, I've been in the meetings. Come on, like we, we all know. No, it's actually really fun though because you know I think watching you guys, like you said last week, like you you played the dragons, you go three zero, go up against the ferryman, and you have some close games, but end up falling zero three. Yesterday, get a nice win for yourselves as well, three one. Uh, so what are some of the things like in maybe the ferryman set and the hound set that kind of stood out to you as like we we need to stop that. Um, I mean, I think you've heard from other players as well. It was a lot of, it was a lot of people kind of talking too much, talking over each other. Um, a lot of felt like tense things, like we had to make that plays happen. Whereas we're a lot better when we can just kind of naturally play the game. Everyone can, I mean, everyone's kind of like that. But when things just feel flowed and more natural, we're just going to be playing better. And last one real quick is just going up against the Warriors, right? This has been a team that's difficult to beat. They're on a five win streak right now. They went on an insane one with Jake during phase one. How do you prepare for a team like that? I mean, I think uh, it's tough. They they have really good picks and bounds themselves, but I think I think as long as we play smart and we don't get baited into what they're doing and we play our own game and we don't get lost in our draft, that we'll be good versus them. I'm excited to watch it. I'm sure everybody at home is as well. So con I almost said congratulations. That's a little preemptive. Good luck on the yeah congratulations preemptively in the event that we don't see you uh, in the the future, but. Good luck in the games. Thanks for your time. We'll go back to the desk. Well, you're there from Slaney. They are just trying to play their own game, making sure the Oni Warriors can't sort of run the game as they so often find themselves doing. Right. And I think that's that's a good mindset to, to go into the games with. I think more than that, what I heard is the Jade Dragons are bad. Quote, <laughs> dash Slaney. So... Now we know. I, 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 I always want to know how the players are thinking about some of these other teams, and he just voiced it for us. And, hey, I always love some friendly trash talk. They backed it up at the very least, right? So we'll have to see if they're able to continue that going into a matchup like this. I don't know anyone that's calling the Oni Warriors bad, though. Yeah. I yeah. can't think of a single person that's saying that right now. Yeah, it is, uh, it is tough to call the Oni Warriors bad. They're on that five-win streak. They've got the potential to break the record once again this season. But Levi's... Hoping to stand in their way, and I think they've got their own interesting game plan to try and do it. Yesterday, we saw them be the ones to pull out this Cerberus, maybe lean into that 10.10 .10 meta as we just had those changes come through. And Fight OK was the only one to, to play it in the solo lane, which was admittedly a little bit surprising for me. I thought we might see that comeback from another couple of characters. We saw Ardio in the second set. But, I mean, I, I'm liking the lean towards the Guardian solos a little bit. Yeah, I think as far as healing comps have gone, once we saw the Highland Ravens play yesterday, they were really leaning towards some of these healers and the sustain meta. If Cerberus is going to come up, it would be into a meta like that. So it could be something that that the Leviathans are looking for. But when I think about healing compositions, the only warriors don't come to mind too often, right? Like, sure, they, they, they did have the propensity to put, like, Aphrodite in the in the support role, things like that. Genetics could also go towards a pick like that. But more often than not, it is a little bit of sustain towards, like, these assassins and then just full carry. So if the Leviathans do want to try and match that pressure, you're going to have to look towards picks like Adapting. You're going to have to look towards jungle pressure trying to stop what Panatom wants to do because if Panatom gets off to a good start that means Sot's gonna have a good lane Pagon's gonna rotate through now you got two junglers it can be very scary well that's maybe the question is is if you are looking to shut down the Oni Warriors like if you're the Leviathans are you trying to play to counter that pressure are you trying to just stem the bleeding until you get to those late game team fights we saw them have a lot of success with the macro play later in the game where you know their opponent had some boxing fights early they were up four to one in kills and then all of a sudden levi's just flip a switch feel like they're in control of the game where are you looking to take it to 
this Oni Warriors team. Picks and mans for game number one, we'll see how they adapt. But, I mean, I think there are a couple different views of, of how you could try to take it to the Warriors here. Yeah, you either try to match that early pressure, which is not easy to do, but it's certainly possible. Or, you sit back, you play for late game, and you wait for a mistake to be made. Because I've said this many times, the Oni Warriors are not a team without flaws. They make mistakes. The issue is they're playing so aggro, they're playing so aggressive, they're playing with such a lead, it almost doesn't matter. So if you're able to stem the bleeding, wait till late game, and wait for one of those crucial errors where they don't group up or they play a little bit too aggressive, a little bit too overconfident, there are definitely ways that the, Le the Leviathans can try and capitalize on a play like that. But it all starts here, right? you you got to make sure that the Oni Warriors aren't getting one of those lethal picks that can just hard carry a game in that first pick slot, which they are in. So far, I see at least three that need to be taken away. The Chernabog, of course, top of the tier list for a reason. That's not going to get through. The Leviathans are in a difficult position because the Oni Warriors are, they're not banning throwaway bans, but they're not banning the, the end-all, be-all picks that cannot get through because they know they're in first pick. They can wait and try and get one for themselves. Yeah, and Pagan's Godpool is still sticking in my head and Set and Pele still both up on the board. You can't ban both anymore if you're the Leviathans. Five bans so far. Athena, Ares, Kamazots taken away by the Oni Warriors. Some support focus there, as well as Yamoja and Chernabog taken away by the Levi's. If you're them, maybe you don't ban Set or Pele. You, you it's got to be Pele. There's no way. You try and let one of them through. You grab the other one, potentially. Interesting. I mean, Levi's had the advantage here. Levi's chose second pick, if I recall correctly. So they were they were the ones that won the coin toss going into this matchup. Wow. They choose the second pick, and they don't ban away either one. They take away Genetics' Kepri, which is, uh, that's maybe Set. a throwaway ban. Wow, that's even more surprising to me, because the way I see it, you ban Pele there, you give up set. Oh well. But in this case, you ban Kepri to get either one. I just don't see the Leviathans playing that set. That, that was my mindset. You take Pele here and you just give the Leviathans the set. Sure, Shinto can take it if he wants, Adapt can take it if he wants, but I didn't feel like they would value that pick that highly. I will say, I had the pleasure of making a tier list with Panda Cat just the other day, and he said Oleron was above S tier. He said, can we make a higher tier SS++ tier? He wow. said, you will never lose pressure with Oleron. As long as you don't get sat on and you, you know pulled CC immunity consistently, Oleron is going to automatically win you lane and you can just kill tanks with the team fight. And so as far as I'm concerned, Leviathan's got exactly what they want. You get Oleron and Pele here, uh, they're happy with that. Yeah, this was banned away from them in all three of their games yesterday. Something Pandacat has shown his proficiency on, and they get the Pele. That, that is certainly not a top two that you're complaining about if you're the Atlantis Leviathans. Something that they were looking for. On the other side, Warriors, they grab the set, think likely headed towards that mid lane. Then Daji and Ganesha here as the second and third pick for them. Daji gets a couple of, a couple of buffs in 10.10, .10, yep. but I mean, this, this still speaks to the warrior style, I think. Yep, I think the Pantom was probably baiting out that Oleron pick there. Uh, and I do assume that Panda Cat knew that because, you know, the Daji has come up time and time again into metas where there's a lot of CC, lack of CC immune characters here, right? What do you do to try and counter the Oleron? Y you get his beads down. You pull him away from that Sanctified Field. You make sure that's not going to be an issue. And you play with your own CC immunity, which Daji has plenty of. So just trying to get that dive off is going to be the call. Throw a Ganesh in the mix. Definitely doesn't have the best matchup up into Oleron early game, but you just drop the, the Darmic Pillars, right? And you should be able to either pull Relics or try and find some engage there. So just trying to make Panda Cat's life a little bit more difficult seems to be the idea from the top three from the Oni Warriors. Throwing Aphrodite into the mix. You're not worried about just one pair of beads. The Oleron will be able to, you know, get out of that Sanctified Field, get out of that Palau pretty consistently with that Undying Love. The issue, of course, is that Aphrodite does not have the best track record. Even Kiss to a hard carry like this does not usually bring that insane pressure. Yeah, that's – and to value it as well, like I, I think they probably could have held it. I'm not sure it ever get banned, gets banned away from them unless they've been practicing it in scrims. Maybe the only Warriors would have tried to focus it out. But still some flex potential there as well, although I'm not sure Shinto has ever gone to the Aphrodite, so it's certainly likely. I would hope not. Yeah, likely probably to end up in that support role. But second waves of bans come through here. Some soul laners taken away from the Leviathans. They take away the Odin and the Cthulhu. We saw Sot on that last week. 
Thor taken away by the Oni Warriors. A little bit of jungle focus, which is a little bit interesting. I mean, I suppose Shinto more likely to end up on that Pele, but certainly flexible still a little bit for the Levites. Yeah, I, I do tend to agree. I think at this point you probably are looking towards the Pele, but you could always throw it into mid lane as well. It's not going to be the worst take there. And trying to match that pressure of set, and more specifically, make sure that whatever mid laner you are picking isn't just getting out pressured because of the early assassin damage. Pele can slot there pretty well. Lancelot, however, tells me that's something that a lot of these junglers have been looking towards. Not the highest tier pick, but just flexes pretty well into the jungle and does some good damage, and the survivability that this Lancelot brings, especially into a matchup like Daji, could have been interesting, but Dappy wants to go back to this Mercury, a pick that we saw once and then was banned away from him. He didn't get his hands back on it again. Uh, still has that hard carry potential. When you have another assassin like Pele who is not going to be building crit, you can just go into this Mercury and have a field day if you get late game. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems like there could be a lot of focus from the Warriors onto some of these other picks. Mercury uh, is left alone, and especially with how adapting, adapting just rushed the rage yep. yesterday. He just like wanted to get into the crit immediately, starting to get that stacked up. But still, one remaining pick for the Leviathans, I think probably holding out for that solo laner if they want to put that Aphrodite in support. But waiting to see where the Warriors end up going. And this, this is still a lot of space for the Warriors, right? They have the solo laner, Sot has quite a big god play. I think he could go to a couple different picks. And then this ADC over on the left side as well. That was not one I was expecting though. I know I wouldn't have wouldn't have guessed that one. I mean the Outwash is gonna have a great matchup into the Afro, into the Pele, heck even the Oleron. And if you're taking any notes from what Baskin has been doing on this pick, if it's given space and if the Outwash can get like two, three items online, surprisingly and I hate to say this because I'm not a fan of the pick. Uh, he could do a lot of damage and be quite tanky. And this is a solo lane outwash, we assume, uh, to be clear. I have not seen... I, I've never seen uh, Pagon go to this outwash, whereas it actually does have some prowess in solo lane. So I'm going to assume it's going to be that that cloak start where you get tablet online, you get a little bit tanky, one to two damage items, one to two tank items, and just try and be this hybrid outwash. The rotation into team fights is really going to be where you see this pick shine. We're not going to see much happen in lane, I would assume. Kernos picked up as well to round out the Oni Warriors draft. Something with a little bit of pressure. Rounds out the dual lane for them as well. And the Levi's may be scrambling a bit. I I'm not sure I'm not sure if I'm prepping picks and bands. I don't know if I ever prep for the op wash explicitly. And considering they held their soul laner until the end of the draft. Oh, wow. They oh, wanted to find right. the counter matchup and Baron with some buffs in 10.10, they go right to it. I mean, Baron extra 15% mitigation while channeling life of the party. So instead of taking 35% less damage, you're taking 50% less damage, That's which a lot. is massive. And now you have to think about what does Alpwash want to do in lane, right? He, he, he wants to clear the wave, he wants to get his cloak, his tablet stacks, and then back up. You don't want to be sitting there scrapping. Baron is going to get life of the party off every single time. Whether you're pulling a Beads or pulling an Aegis, you know, it doesn't matter. You're getting a Relic and then the next ult will be connecting. I expect to see a lot of pressure put into solo lane onto this Alpwash, which it's not going to be easy, right? Because if you're using Life of the Party to pull Relics, that means that Panatom can come over. That means that you can find the Palas, you can find the Dodge Yields. You, I think that a lot of this game is going to be decided on the right side of the map in that solo lane in particular. Blue buffs, very important, especially for mage solos who their mana costs are a bit more than like a warrior, right? If you're going to try to clear that wave, you have to spam a bit, which means you lose out that buff, you're going to be having a rough time. Yeah, these, these team fights look crazy as well. I'm, just, I'm trying to imagine the, the scenario where all of the ults get dropped and typically you think of Oleron ult, Sanctified Field as, as a good thing. Everything moves slower. But I mean, man, if that just doesn't make the ghost field from Opwash last longer and you have to stand in the ghost and take damage from it a little bit longer, I, I'm almost like I, I, I think I can at least see the idea now of why they were okay letting this Ola run through. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. I think that that, is, that was the call. Maybe they, they, they saw the tier list, right? Like, wait, Panda Cat loves this Ola run. He says it's the best pick in the game. Let's get the Daji to pull. 
Let's get the set to dive it. Let's get the Ganesh to dive it. Force out that ultimate. Let's get the Alpwash to deal with all the healing and the survivability. As well as Sarden is just a good pick in the in the duo lane. With that being said, the Lance Leviathans, while their comp isn't as tanky, of course, with Baron buffs, they'll be taking a little bit less damage during that ultimate. They also have some tools here, some late game hard carries. For if sure. Merc's able to get online, get that crit stacked up, can certainly make a difference. If the Aphrodite is kissed to one of those targets, one of those hard carries, that can certainly make a difference. That Undying Love attached to like a Mercury or something, there's going to be a lot of DPS there. And of course, getting Pele, one of the best gods in the game at the moment, is just going to be strong no matter what. I think it's all going to be about what we were talking about earlier. Are you able to get to late game? Are you able to stem the bleeding and stop this early aggression that the Oni Warriors come for? If you are, your late game's looking pretty good. Your late game could look pretty good. They have to get there, though, if you're the Atlantis Leviathans. You're certainly looking to scale up, especially on this Mercury, on this Aphrodite. We'll see if they can get to that late game as we jump into game number one with Gore and Inbound. Thanks so much, Frog and Trelly. That's right, it's Gore, it's Inbound. And in just a second, it's going to be Doug giving us the window into the battleground. Warriors and Leviathans. And inbound, this one was one that, you know, just to, to, to I guess, pull back the curtain a little bit. On the way here, especially with the, the patch, but, you know, Frog and I were talking about Guardian solos and, and, you know, with Cerberus getting a buff, with Ardeo getting a buff. Like, are we going to start seeing them? Where are Warriors right now? I will admit... I was not expecting mages. 62 to 38, by the way, for the, the Twitch poll in favor of the Warriors. And so when I see Opwash get locked in, I'm a little surprised. But you know what? Sot likes some weird things We've sometimes. Seen it before <laughs> and, also. And, and yeah, Baskin's played it. So it's weird, but not unheard of. And we've seen Baron solo in the past. And that's what fine. Okay. I'm not sure I've seen them go against each other, if at all, but definitely not in a while. But then to double down, there's only one Guardian in this matchup to begin with. And so it just feels like this one's going to be a very interesting team that maybe, or fight and game, that maybe favors kind of the warrior style of hold W and fight. Yeah, very, you know, unique kind of comps. There's not that traditional type of guardian solo or guardian support for both teams, warrior solos. But they will try to fill those roles. Afro's going to build very tanky. Baron already starting that tier one. Genji's going to be looking very tanky too. Solo on the opposite side opts for the tier one tablet, I'd have to assume at this point. Uh, instead of the urchin, or urchin, that's the item that got replaced by cloak. Instead yeah, of the cloak to get is. those stacks off. <laughs> so no, honestly, I wouldn't have even been able to caught it because you said urchin with such confidence, confidence that my brain, well, my brain was like, yeah, urchin, I remember that item. It's a good item. <laughs> but it's going to be very, urchin. very unique solo lane. And I think it comes down to jungle play. I think jungle play is going to be very important in this yeah. early portion of the game. I think when we get to late game, we can talk about different things where which, you know, mage solo is able to play these team fights uh, better and then... I think also a lot of the late game relies on Panda and relies on Ronnie, because these warriors want to capitalize off of them making mistakes with this comp. You pull beads on Panda, Ronnie's ult is all the more important. You pull Ronnie's ult, Panda's beads are all the more important. And there's a lot of things you have to be able to mm -hmm. beads. This is going to be a very exciting late game to focus on in the mid portion and the early portion. It'll be a little bit more farm style, I think. Wait for those first items online. And one thing I'm, I'm actually really curious and I want to pick your brain about, is is specifically you had mentioned the mages in solo and, and kind of seeing like how they go on, but the reason we were talking outside of like the buffs about guardians in solo and, and one of the things that I had said this morning to Frog was, you know what? Sometimes I'm I'm okay with it because like then you know, no no fights happening over there. Like you yeah. you know for a fact. Okay, I'm waiting for these guys till team fights. Let's just look at left lane. Let's look at mid. Let's keep our eyes on the jungler. But when we get these mages involved, and, and we just saw Sot like, pushed up against the tower line of Fine OK, it becomes an extremely volatile lane on the right-hand side. So, you know, you've got Oleron Afro on, the, uh, on one side of the map, and then you've got these two mages that are, are going to be fighting each other face-to-face -face on the other. Do you expect to see more focus on the right-hand side because it's a little squishier? Uh, I think the fighting is going to be kind of split between just what the team wants to prioritize, yeah. whatever the, the team is going for. Because the volatility usually comes into duo lane from, you know, ADC is a lot easier to kill. You can punish them a lot easier. Yeah. And then you look at the solo lane, it's like you said, farming warriors that are just rotating for team fights. When you get to these squishy mages, these gods that aren't as safe, even if they're going to be building those tankier items, very volatile over there and a lot of blue buff importance. Uh, Trelly highlighted that where 
If you have, uh, Vamp is a very good mana sustain item, so it's not as bad since they both opted for that. But it's very risky losing your blue buff uh, as a mage solo. Adapting has made his way over towards left. Looked like he might have wanted to go in. It's kind of hard to catch up to a Ganesh and a Kern. They can just dash. And he's not level 5 yet, so Adapting doesn't have that kind of instantaneous gank that we've seen from a Mercury. Instead, it's just the shield buff. Tosses that over to Panda Cat. And it's going to be a little lighter. Panatom shows face on right. Damage is there. Oh, but the control is not. Fine, okay, gets low, but manages to escape here. And this is more or less, I mean, we were talking about the Daji. The desk talked about the Daji being very important for pulling beads. You mentioned it here for, for Ronghyu. Panda Cat, I think, like that engage up against something like the Oleron, maybe even early on, but, but whenever Panatom's going to get involved, it is a pick that in past has, has dictated entire games just on its own. Yeah, and that's the, the strength of Daji, where she's a pick-oriented god, but she plays va late games very well because of the Banish. So she does get ahead, she does get that lead, she has that one-shot potential, that bully potential. And if she's behind, she still has that pick potential of just pulling beads. So she does a lot of things very well. I, I also think she got a buff, maybe not this patch, I think it was maybe the patch before, where she actually has slower cooldown on her three. So a little extra strength there. Um, overall, characters was really strong in the meta, and by fights like this, next time she's level 5, this is going to be very, very scary for the red team. Honestly, it might be scary now. Adapting goes in, pulls the beats from Sot. Damage is there, though. The upwash is low. You need one more auto. Weaves it in. Panatom finds first blood heal up for SOT. Now, fine. Okay, has to find a way back into lane. It's going to be slow rolling, but they don't have the abilities. Cooldowns playing a big factor. Fine. Okay, walks away. Blue buff invade warriors with first blood. Such a tough Kill on the Opwash there. He's so tanky with the healing on the passive. Pegon going for the red. Uh oh, might be in more trouble. Oh, from Shinto dropped. All you need is one more hit. You need a little bit of help. Adapting isn't level five yet. Use the close gap. There's a teleport away. Pagon walks out of this one alive, unpunished for his insolence. Sometimes Pegon makes these plays and it's like, yeah, he's going to get punished. Yeah, surely and he, he just doesn't there. get punished, and he, he goes in, he makes them miss part of that mid-wave also with that pressure. Uh, Panda actually forced to use ult in lane, should kind of be the end of it. You were spot Two on. ults for one. Fight, fight, fight. Everywhere on everywhere. the map, like, broke out within there, 30 seconds of It's each just other. <laughs> everywhere is so volatile in this game. You look at double assassins in mid, you've got both junglers that want to fight at 5, and now we both see them hitting over to 5. Uh, obviously, Pan Tom's got a little bit more strength with the Yotins compared to Tier 2 Rage for adapting. So expect Pan Tom to start making plays a little bit earlier, but as soon as Pan Tom, or as soon as adapting gets that Rage online, that's where we should expect to see them to make plays around adapting. You've got some good targets to, for a crit to hit, right? I mean, in, unless we see a Spectral online early, uh, we are not looking at some tanky players on the other side. Sot, Panatom, Pagon, Netroid. Some of those can, can turn the damage around back on you. And like you said, Sot can be a little bit of a nuisance just because he's got that passive heal. But then he's still a mage, right? <laughs> At the end of the day, he's still yep. a mage. He can heal up as long as you get two crits in a row, get a little lucky for adapting. That uh, could look good for them. Now, like you said, ults up uh, for the Mercury and for Panatom. He goes in for a brief but not quite full invade. Gets, I think, a little bit of experience away. Leaves, yeah, just the big there for adapting in terms of the mask camp that is existing over on the right-hand side. He's been lurking around over here. Feels like he wants a little bit more. Adapting has gone beats. Panatom goes in. Gets a lot of damage. Oh, my God, the burn that he has. Adapting cannot take this fight. And just like you said, until that rage is here, this is Panatom's show, and he's looking for more forces. Oh, no, but teleports to him. Oh, my God, Panatom. He's just better. He now mechanics you and kills you every day of the week. What a play from the jungler on the Warriors. The timing on that was so good. Even a second later, Netroid actually getting dove here, forces all the Who cares? Down. Kill him! It doesn't matter! <laughs> Panatom made you look like a clown! Wow. What a <laughs> oh play by God. Panatom. Duo. He Nothing happened too. too much. <laughs> Panatom lives on right side. They invade the blue buff also. Whew. Wow, what a... Uh, what a start to this game already. Panatom... Man, at, look, I think it's all downhill from here, dude. I don't know if you can do better than that. <laughs> that was so crazy. Oh, I want to watch that. And I, I want you specifically, as we go through the replay, because it, it's so it's so specific. It's so narrow how he gets this to work. Well, I think it's a little bit of a him being confident that as soon as adapting here's Blink, he's going to use alt. Because Panatom has his ult up too, so it's adapting want to trade, you know, the ultimates, but... 
Panatom just, you know, a lot less risky just using the three cooldown instead of the alt cooldown, and then it's if adapting doesn't think that you're just going to three onto him, then he's just dead. And Panatom plays it exactly as he should. Adapting plays it as expected also, and uh, the, the kill kind of comes through, and it looks incredible as he does it too. <laughs> My favorite. And <laughs> it was just immediately you see that. Once you know he's out, I look at the player camp, Panatom standing up pointing. He, he's he's like letting fist him know. Pumping. And as he should, what a play. And yet it's just the second kill of the game. We're only seven minutes in. The Warriors are up 2-0. Gold's not even that separated from these two teams. As, as, as far as things go, this is pretty even. Yeah, and I think you just have to look at soul or duo lane. Aphrodite and Olaron is very hard to punish in this 2v2. So much safety, so much damage. They can out-trade you. They're going to need Panatom to come over here to, you know, kind of take some pressure off them. But Panatom at this point doesn't really have a ton of kill potential over here. If Afro has ult. Uh, Panda has beads. It's a very difficult kill for him to make. I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of just let Duo kind of do its thing and just play through solo lane right now. That is going to be a difficult matchup for them to keep fighting through, and those blue buffs should be kind of chain invaded. I'm I'm going to be real with you. It's going to take me a while to get. Like, I can I can it's just in my brain. It's ingrained just watching Panatom. But we'll have to wait until we see anything like that. I, more so, I'm, I'm wondering, does it do anything to maybe affect this kind of fight? Pagon taking a little bit of damage. Saved out, manages to disengage from Shinto. Panatom comes in, saves the day, helps keep his mid laner alive. Just a little bit longer adapting. Helps turn things around, gets at least one. Beats still up for the Mercury. He's going to use him a little late. Panatom's wow. low, dash forward, punch, good. Now Sot has to come in and try to clean this up. Adapting with a double kill. And it looks like the disengage is there, so that answers that question. If he's feeling put out after that last kill, you would not know. A great turnaround for him. And it maybe doesn't look as flashy as Adapting's, I mean, as Panatom's play, but that is not an easy play to make, too. That's a flick that you have to hit. Panatom can go just about anywhere there. He could have gone towards Sot, he could have gone towards mid, towards his own jungle. Very difficult for Adapting to get that flick and to actually hit yeah. that. And he gets the shutdown also onto Panatom, and uh, Adapting actually has the lead now in jungle. Two stacks onto his Rage. That Deathbringer is going to be online very, very soon. And a Deathbringer Mercury at 10 minutes is going to be very scary for the Warriors. He heard what I said, and he was like, no, 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 no. that's not going to stand. <laughs> I'm not going to get out mechanics by some new kid on the block. I'm going to show him what's for. And so far, 2-2-0 two, two, and zero has turned this game fully around. Again, it was mostly even, but now in favor slightly of the Leviathans. And with that ult online, or at least coming back up soon for adapting, last time has to use it for a disengage, but now has two stacks on the rage, and more specifically inbound. It feels like it's the, the premise of a Mercury. Hey, I'm going to show up in, in solo, and I'm going to start my ult behind the tower, and then I'm just going to kill this mage. I'm going to go to duo. And this Karninos, who no longer has a tier 1 tower, He's just cannon fodder for me. And like you said, if he finishes off a Deathbringer, it becomes a much more dangerous game for any warrior to try and fight him. Yeah, and that is the spike uh -oh. that you expect adapting to play around Netroid. Level 8 right now. A level behind Rongyu, the enemy support. Genetics, genetics also level 8. The bleeding in solo or in duo lane right now for this Warriors team isn't unmanageable right now, but it's definitely a big discrepancy, especially when you compare items. You have just one tier one item for both supports. Panatom looking to bully out a little bit. Adapting maybe learned from the past <laughs> mistake and just ults out right away instead of letting those cooldowns come back up. That doesn't seem like it's stopping Panatom, though. He's still walking around deep in the jungle. Poor Netroid, though. And you mentioned the level down of the enemy support. And in some cases, I mean, for a little bit there, he's technically two levels down, so probably shoot it right in the middle. Level and a half. And that is a difficult spot to be in, especially because it doesn't seem like the Leviathans are giving him much option. They are still pushing up, so he can stay under his tower. That's helping a little bit. But at the same time, you don't even feel safe under your own tier 2 when the Aphrodite healing is there. Exactly, and Aphrodite ult allows tower dives to be a lot easier, and Olderun ult also yeah, allows tower dives too. <laughs> so oh, it's, no. a, it's a risky spot for Netroid to be in, and Ganesh isn't giving too much survivability to him right now. Ganesh is mostly playing for those team fights, trying to get items online. And right now, they're just walking through enemy jungle. Genix takes no poke there. Yeah. Not, not, a, not a single ounce of poke. All in on Shito, Shito mid. Oh, yeah. A lot of damage towards him. But not the full commit. I'm kind of surprised to see they fell back. Then again, there's four Leviathans. And maybe at this point, especially recognizing, maybe you don't want to jump into the Aphrodite with a Mercury nearby. 
when things Probably could not. just go wrong. And Probably. the sanctified fields. A lot of those ults actually just sound like a bad news And, and for Nets you. sitting under his tier two <laughs> tower, so he's now rotating to that. Slight advantage for the Levi's yeah. with the alt trade because they have the 10% extra cooldown in mid lane. And he's also backed for his second relic in mid now. Shinto's got two relics. Pegon still has not reset. And these are sometimes spikes that uh, SPL teams will opt to play around as the solo laners trade ultimates and relics. No relic forced by Solo, and he'll just heal up. Actually, relics forced. A lot of damage actually coming out. Wow. Solo. Didn't think he would be this Adapting low. Adapting actually ulted in. And now he's going to have to drop his ult. Adapting, like he said, is here. The damage could be there. The ult's helping. The tower's not doing enough, though. Adapting low. Panatom comes in, needs a little bit more. Beads are back up for Adapting. So even with the ult, isn't going to be what you need. You have to hit the shots. And now three stacks on the Rage, as well as a back here from Adapting. I was thinking maybe he had enough gold. Let's see. Item purchase, just the blink for his level 12. And Solo being a little... Maybe disrespectful with the build, opting for a breastplate instead of that, you know, cloak that we had talked about, the Baskin yeah. build, or even going a magical defense item. That Baron damage was a, probably a little bit more than he anticipated. Well, Shinto, this has been the fight of the ages between him and Pagon, but you've got genetics helping one side. Pagon still barely makes it out of that one engagement alive, and now you've got Rong Yu, Panda Cat adapting, adapting looking for your life, and they're going to find it. They're going to pick up genetics as well. One for two, and the Leviathans answer the Warriors in kind. That doesn't feel great for Shinto, but it was such a good bait by him to completely just take that fight. He knew he was dying there as soon as he starts trading. He's not getting out. Yeah. But he saw his team was rotating in, and now with that fight in mid, they're actually able to rotate to this Gold Fury and essentially pick it up for free. There is a chance that Solo looks to rotate here, but they might burn this fast enough. Deathbringer and Olorun, like, this is just dead. And the control seems to be here. Not only, like you said, just dead. Who's going to rotate in? Metroid? Not in this life right now. Just now hits 12, backs up to the base. And that's going to put us around 2,500, just a little shy for the Leviathans. It has been a very exciting 13 and a half minutes. This is a best of five. We've got so much smite to play. But this has been nothing short of a spectacle between the Warriors and the Leviathans. And now it's it's figuring out the mid game, right? So the early game explosive. Now you've got a Deathbringer online for adapting. You've got a fully stacked Rage. That feels, in and of itself, very dangerous to have to deal with around any of these objectives. Yeah, and I actually like a lot of the spikes by the Levi's at this point, too. You have double magical and physical defense for final K. You've got double crit for adapting. Shinto's got three pen items online, one with reducing the healing. Rongyu's almost got that. I assume is going to be a regrowth. There is a chance he maybe goes breastplate with that buff to breastplate. And then you have two items on Panda. The Levi's are kind of exploding right now. After a good early game by the Warriors, that like early mid portion of the game was really dominated by the Levi's. Right after adapting, had that two for one trade around mid. Well, I think the Warriors have had maybe some of the flashier plays. True, definitely true. The Leviathans have had the more active plays that have led to better things on the board. We might see a little bit more. Speaking of active, Panatom. Right-hand side of the map, no blue buff is here, so it's fine, okay, who could be the target. That tier one tower is enough to ward away Panaton, though, as well as maybe some deep wards, maybe not, just some coverage of all five Leviathans on the right-hand side of the map. Pyromancer could be an easy call for them, but if they can find some kills, they'll Solo's absolutely go up. for it. Adapting's got the ult, Sots high in the lane and half health, adapting, holding out Panaton, losing the trade there, but opening his team the path, ults away. And is going to have the rest of his team here. Get a rotation from Genetics, but it's a very, very simple five-man gank on Solo lane. Put Solo or Troll in the Possibly ground. Possibly a fire maybe here, too. And they're going to go. Yes, exactly for the fire. Not the Pyromancer. Started up 15 minutes in. Should be spotted out. Genetics sees it. Panatom's here. But what are you going to do? 2v5. Pagon slowly rotating in. Might have the damage. Sanctified Fields dropped on the Fire Giant. It's one-third HP, 33% and still falling fast. Pagon goes in. Damage is there. Leviathan secure that one. And they're looking for the fight after. Panatom up onto the Powwow. Looking for some pulls. Has Rong Yu chained. That is going to be the only one. Pulls Rong Yu, no follow-up. Rong Yu still alive. Panatom can't quite save the team. No, he up. gets out. And Pagon gets to the back. Pagon takes out the support and is running away. Knock up good. And it should be the secure. They lose one. Pick up the support. And more importantly, the Leviathans get the Fire Giant 15 and a half in. What a great, you know, grouping by the Levi's to make that play on the solo. I was worried they maybe over-rotated a little bit, but their fire damage, their fire sustained, everything about their fire fights at this point is almost unstoppable. They have the damage, their secure is manageable, it's not great. But when the only out-secure there is Pegon with Skewer, 
Yeah. I'm pretty comfortable with taking that 50-50, and even if you do lose it after, you are able to get two, three kills there, as they did anyway. And all that starts because, you know, Solo's pushing a little bit too far up. He had the confidence with Pe Peneton behind him, but the entire Levi's team actually just rotated over there and cleaned him up. It was the, the pathing as well. Like, we were watching it, and there was a ward right around the blue buff, and there was a ward in mid lane. And so you knew, final K's here, and I believe you could see, like, Shinto and Rongyu. And it's, okay, if it's a 3v2, yeah, you can make that. However, adapting and Panda Cat running through the jungle <laughs> alongside that and not noticed, that's going to cause some issues. By the time they, they show up on the map, you're already engaged. And so causes some trouble. And the desk was talking about late game. Leviathans, that's where they needed to go. And it feels like they are, you know, especially with, as you highlighted, power spikes, levels. They're getting there. And they're getting there in shining colors. Yeah, and I think the, the late game... <clears throat> the late game is a little in favor of the Levi's, but it is still a risky late game to have because of the fight potential the Warriors actually have to fight back. Yeah. But that being said, if I told you you had a late game Mercury, late game Aphrodite, late game Olorun, and even a late game Baron Solo in case... Oh, oh Panatom's yeah. just done. Yeah. That's what a... They just waited around the corner. Good play by two them. Two-level lead for a Mercury and a Deathbringer full-stacked Rage will do for you. He just got one <laughs> shot just about. No beads on Panatom also. Couldn't even get the ult off. And going, you know, kind of thinking about that firefight also, the Warriors are so far behind, they're not even able to push towers fast enough. Panatom ult trading right now. And honestly, he might like this trade. Does walk through the Dharmic Pillars. Genesis, but is just just so much damage. Trashing Genetics' health bar. And it doesn't seem like the Warriors have any sort of response. Good stun on the retreat from the Leviathans. Fury's back up over on the left-hand side. Normally, this is where we would talk about like can, if the Warriors can step up to it, but I don't know that they can. I don't think they can, nor do I think they should. But I think this is where some teams kind of get in that that style that the Warriors really benefit from, where they got this first Fire Giant, and if they don't you know, kind of start to speed up this Fire Giant push, they're not going to be pushing their lead as much as they could be. And the Warriors do it better than anyone else, where they kind of bait out one person, maybe have one person die, maybe Solo dies. But he gets chased out for so long that a lot of times you're not even able to push towers. We've gotten all the tier 1s down, one tier 2 down in solo lane for the Levi's. Uh, about another minute on fire, just under 40 seconds. That should be all it wrote for this fire giant. But they've got about 6k gold, 6,500 gold, and they're going to be getting ready for that next fire giant. That's the big thing. 30 seconds left on the buff. About a minute and a half, 9,000 experience, and... Normally, when we look at an experience lead that big, you can say level 20, okay, it's yep. still counting. Just hit level 20 for Shinto, and I'm, I do mean just, like three seconds ago. Now, you're talking about effective, on-field, easily maintained experience lead, and a lot of that, like you're seeing a level in support, you're seeing a level for the carries, two, two, one. Uh, every single warrior is behind their counterpart on the Leviathans. And so... You have to talk about prep, and you have to talk about Netroy. Oh. He does make it. Oh, my God. That was so close. But he makes it back to base. So does Genetics, both of them, at a very, very, very thin margin. Now Panatom tries to do something similar. Has to go up onto the Palau. Ult's been forced. Gets the beads from Shinto. That's actually going to be a big trade for Panatom. And more importantly, keeps his life in the process. Fire Giant, as you mentioned, is going to be coming up. Now in about 30 seconds. So that's going to be some necessary time that Panatom's gone. Not a great trade for the Levi's, but just putting that pressure onto the Warriors to show if you do walk up and you are out of position even the slightest, we will be looking to commit. And it will force them to just kind of stay back a little bit. Warriors opting to give up Pyro, most likely giving up this Fire Giant. They have that left wave in duo lane pushed up very far. They're probably going to be looking to group around there. And Pegon's going to try, emphasis on try, to keep mid pushed out. Baron's matching him in mid. Not somebody he's... Too scared of. There's no, yeah. no too much threat there from the Baron, but this is something that Pegon can pretty easily keep up. Now we see Leviathan stacked up. Fire Giant left side is where the Warriors are at. Tier 2 is going to be their option. So Fire Giant should go pretty easily to the Leviathan. He just trades with him. Yeah, Final K's come back, adapting. Panatom taking some shots now from the tower. Panatom's kind of low. Adapting's got the ult charged. Isn't going to go in. Fire Giant on 5. And you got to be careful. Pagon backs to base, as does Sot. Three of them stay around, and it was looking like it could have been a big loop around from the Leviathans. Instead, kind of two ships passing in the night, just avoid each other narrowly. And adapting right now when he gets three down by the Daji, instead of running away like he had to do in the early game, 
He just turns and trades with him. Yeah. He just crits him in the face. <laughs> All level right, bet. Level 20 Mercury <laughs> with the finish serrated. Bloodforge may be finished on back. He did yep. hit the reset, and he did did finish the blood fortune. Now we've got a double life steal, double crit mercury, with Pen at level 20 with Fire Giant, and they're gonna be looking to group and push down these towers and eventually Phoenixes. And a three level lead at that. Right? <laughs> a three level lead. <laughs> if it wasn't enough, if all those things didn't already sound good, he's also ahead. He's the second one to hit level 20 this game, uh, just behind Shinta. Which, come on, you've been watching Leviathan's games for a while. Yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> And it is just an insane, insane turnaround. Again, the Warriors, it felt like they had something explosive going for them. Maybe they still do. Pantom was over on left. Looks like he's going to be backing. Same for Pagon. No, he's not going to back fully. So it's going to be Shinto versus Pagon. And a 1v1 over on right. This could be a massive kill for Shinto to find oh it. Oh, my. He's got the damage, but Pagon no has the distance. No blink. Maybe no nothing to say about this one. Pagon's just going to be forced on the run. Meanwhile, the rest of the team engaging. Actually, could run to his help. Has Panatom. Teleports forward. Shinto is still on the chase. Pagon is going to swap out. And it doesn't seem like Panatom wants to go in. You know the Volcanic Lightning is down. But you also need some defense. And you also have Adapting who goes in for the ult. Closes the gap. Gets Pagon against the wall. And helps Shinto find that kill. Now a 5v4 defense for the Warriors. And left side Phoenix is getting pushed. They have to be careful here because th this Opwash ult could go wild. Maybe try to bait it out. They have the pressure of a 5v4. Mid is also being pushed up. Shinto adapting could look to threaten that. Playing up around Opwash, playing and sieging into Opwash is never something you want to do, especially with a Ganesh with him. Well, they're going to go for it. Dharmic Pillars. Technically available if you need to drop it. Somebody's got to do something at this point, Baron. Goes for the pull. There's the Sanctified Fields. No one is looking great for the defense here on the Warriors. Finally, Darmic Pillars come down. Create some space, but you're still in the 5v4. Phoenix just a couple autos away from being destroyed. Baron's Brew in pocket on some of the Leviathans. They're going to be able to stay sustained up, no problem. There's going to be the Aplosh now going for a staggered defense. And now Palau comes in. Panatom looking for some pulls. Only has Rong Yu as of right now. Gets him no follow-up. And Rong Yu, for the second time, gets pulled and gets to walk away. Now got five strong. Pagon's back. And that seems to be enough to make the Leviathans play this carefully. Five ults used by the Warriors, and we still have Shinto's ult up and adapting, and Final K's ult are spawning up soon. This Phoenix is also very, very low. Yeah. I want to see the Levi stick around here. Heal up a little bit, and then this should just be yours. Just play it slow. You still have time on this fire. Don't get too antsy. Wait for your ults, and then take the fight. 40 seconds to try and get it. They just walk forward. Couple more autos should do it. Left side bird goes down for the Warriors. And now they're going for a pull as well. Force the beads out of Sot. And the Baron ult used by Final K to make... The Warriors feel the pressure of the Leviathan's push, but it's going to fall flat there. 15,000 uh, and growing, it feels like, maybe even 16,000 gold in favor of the Leviathans. And neutral objectives galore. Adapting looks like he's going to just go ahead and solo out the Pyromancer. There's a beacon to grab and a Fury to grab over on the other side. So a very simple retreat for the Leviathans and a wildly successful Fire Giant. Such, like... A great siege by the Levi's there. They played it slow, they baited out abilities. Final K was pulling relics with the ultimate, and they didn't get, you know, forced into a bad fight with both Solo's ult and Genetics ult. They played it slow, they poked it down, and they didn't overcommit. If they keep playing it like that, this Warriors team is gonna have to make something happen, and it is very hard to make something happen into an Aphrodite. Yeah. Titans gonna spawn up over on right as the beacon gets captured. It didn't get captured by the Leviathan, so it felt like they could have just split, taken all three. They let the, the beacon go to the Warriors, but they grab a Fury, they grab a Pyro, and now they're gonna be set up. They maybe have just been waiting to get that Titan to delay coming out of base a little bit more. True. Because left is gonna be pushing up. They're gonna have Titan coming down right as this Fire Giant is gonna be spawning. Still not EFG. So not like a true threat, but with how much sustain they have and how they've been able to play these fights, it still should be pretty easy. Fire should be spawning first. Titan should be walking down second. They have the left wave pushing down right now. Five man groups by both teams. Nobody's pushing out left wave. Well, there's a grouping. Missing Fine OK for a moment on the Leviathans. Could be a 
Hick, if Panatom can close that gap, goes in, tries to get the damage down on the Baron, but there's the rest of the Leviathans, and there's the ults as well! They've got the damage! Genetics is getting burned instantly, pulled back by Fino K, and a simple kill for the Leviathans, wow. and it has opened the floodgates! You lose Netroid, Pagon forced to retreat, Panatom up on the Palau, looking for some pulls, looking for some damage, goes down in, picks up one, but you're losing the rest, you need to find more kills, you need to go huge if you're the jungler here, and you've got a double, Adapting. you're looking for more, but Adapting has turned this one around the Mercury, even though he fell early, turns things in his favor for the Leviathans. It's 14 to 7. Fire Giants up, Titans available. They can't end the game just yet inbound, but they've got 40 seconds to do whatever they want on the map. And it was a pretty crisp turn by them. They were looking to go get the end. Instead, they have to go get the Titan down and right. They still have a good amount of time, but I like they split up here. There's no way they can get exactly what they need, which is ending the game. So they push down mid, they go get this Titan, they're gonna hit a reset quick and they're gonna come back to they're gonna come back to Fire Giant now with no relics on the Oni Warriors other than an Aegis on Netroid and a Frenzy on Genetics. And the Levi's are feeling a little bit better with beads on both solo jungle and the blink still available on Shinto. And then they also have the Aphrodite on top of that, just in case anybody doesn't have relics. Yeah. You've got a Titan's still technically pushing right. Meanwhile, and as you highlighted, Shinto just says, cool, y'all deal with that, I'm going mid Phoenix. So takes a second bird, you've got fire minions on left, and that Phoenix is still about a minute, maybe a little shy of respawning. And so, there's nothing the Warriors can really do. Fire Giant, if you're looking for something fortuitous for the Warriors, it's not enhanced yet. That's, that's gonna be the only thing. Unfortunately, you've only got the one objective currently to try and defend. And it doesn't look like you're going to find him. Shinto, though, gets baited oh in by goodness. Genetics, and that's going to be the jump in from the Warriors. They kill him off. Fire Giant gets still picked up by the Leviathans. Banatom onto the Palau, throws out some chains, Could be a just risky a little fight. bit of damage, and it's going to force the beads from Fine. Okay, falls back. Rest of the Warriors are here. Can they continue their engage in a 4v4? Genetics is low. Panatom too low maybe to fight. Sot caught out in the jungle by some CC. Stray and Errant damage finding its way onto his health bar, but he manages to live through a majority of it. That kill on Shinto ends up being massive, but is it going to be enough for the Warriors? Left, Phoenix has spawned, but they still have the fire waves pushing down there. This is a 4v5 push by the Levi's if they go for it. They take the speed away, they walk away, happy with their fire giant. Not too happy that they aren't able to put the pressure on right now because Shinto was taken down. But overall, I think if, if Final K is able to hit either the 3 or the 2 to speed up the team or to slow down Solar Troll, that is a fight the Levi's are taking. They are 100% going to try to kill Sot. Unfortunately, they don't hit a lot of their CC, they don't hit a lot of their, you know, chase potential. And then they don't want to chase too far into the jungle just in case someone on the Warriors, and there was three of them, were waiting behind a wall. They were just waiting, hoping they'd maybe get a little bit more than she. They got Shinto though, that's a huge kill. And that's going to be enough. More importantly, and, and something that you had highlighted as they had reset, they get their relics back outside of Sot's beads, which are now down, but everybody else has theirs, which is maybe something you wanted a little bit more. Unfortunately, you let the Leviathans keep theirs, so there's not necessarily a huge pull on the other side, but it gives you back a more equal footing. Shinto's back on the board, but no Fire Giant maybe slow things down. You have a weakened left side Phoenix. Adapting at this point, he's so far ahead and feels comfortable, he's gone in for a Mantle. How do you like that on a Mercury? I love it for this game specifically, because this is a game where adapting can just 1v1 anyone at this point. And actually, I'm going to give it uh -oh. back to you. Warriors are looking to group here. Yeah, and they're going in. They're looking for Shinto immediately. They take him down to half health, force the Volcanic Lightning as a disengage. Panatom goes in. There's going to be a pull onto Genetics, but he might want that. The rest of the Warriors flanking around the side. Warriors, and specifically Sot, dropping the ult, and they isolate. Fine, okay, get the kill. But adapting, look at adapting. Back door. Adapting's just going in for the back door. Adapting just wants the game, and adapting looks he's like he's going to find it. They're stopping the backs. It does not matter, but he doesn't have the minions. He's taking a lot of damage in the process, so the fight on the left-hand side suddenly he becomes a little bit more important. Somebody gets their back off, and now the win is going towards the Warriors. They've got the fights. They've taken out three. They defend the base at the same time. Shinto gets one pick Shinto. up two, and keeps this one going for him. Nobody can end. Adapting. Ult down the lane. Chase down Netroid. A couple more autos is all you need. It's a 1v1 in the jungle with the junglers. The last man standing on either side. And Panatom unfortunately can't chase there. He really wanted to. You could tell he wanted to get that chase down. But he uses his better judgment. Team's probably pinging him and telling him to go defend middle lane. Get this Phoenix back up. What an incredible I thought it was over. 5v4 fight. Adapting. If the wave, one more minion walks in there with adapting, he gets the end. 
but that one minion means he's going to have to aggro it the entire time. He's unable to take the 1v1 versus the Titan, which no character can 1v1 the Titan. And unfortunately, because of that, Fire Giant is off. Everyone on the Levi's, except Adapting. All three Phoenixes are back up. And then EFG is spawning again in about a minute and a half. And it's, it's this world. So when Adapting doesn't kill the Titan, Shinto in the rest of the Leviathans, losing the fight on left. If Shinto does not kill two there, <laughs> he kills off uh, Genetics, and I believe it was the chase down on Netroid, but he gets two, and that, that's important just for the numbers game, right? Because otherwise it feels like, yeah, there's two tier two standing, you've got 40 seconds if you're the Warriors. You just run it down and try to, to, to win, hope that adapting isn't going to do enough. So they pull a very maybe small thing at the tail end of it, but just enough to make it so that now we're talking about, like you said, three Phoenixes up for the Warriors. Fire minions done and dealt with. You're still in the hole by a lot, but experience doesn't matter anymore. Everybody's level 20. Items admittedly kind of stopping mattering as we, we start to talk about the fact that you've got six slots for everybody, I think, except Genetics now, who is still holding on. And then upgraded relics, right? That's going to be the other conversation. Wards as well, considering the inventory for the Warriors. And so inbound, like you said, I think it might all come down to this EFG fight or... Potentially one nearby, depends on whether or not the Leviathans, or the Warriors, they've been looking for fights anywhere except where you would expect them. Yeah, the Warriors have been taking these really, you know, wonky, hard-to-tell fights, and it's working out for them because the Levi's don't seem prepared. For the positive side for the Levi's, even though that they, you know, are kind of in a much, even, much more even 5v5 at this point, there's no other towers up. Mid and left are weakened. If they win this, even in a one for two trade, two for three trade, where they have this little advantage, they can still look to end. On the opposite side, the Warriors have to have a pretty convincing end or, or fight to be able to get an end because there's still towers up. They've not killed a Phoenix yet. Unless they get that EFG where then the backdoor protections don't matter as much, but it's a little bit more difficult still yeah. for the Warriors to get this game than it is for the Levi's. Fire Giant spawned in, blue flames on his shoulder, enhanced as he stands tall, 33 minutes in. The Warriors with control of the pit right now, vision being dropped all around the board. Leviathan's grouped up, maybe looking for Panadom, who's over on the side on his own. Beads not used by Saudi, gets pulled in and stunned, but he's tanky enough that he's not too worried about it right now. Maintains relics. Not his health bar, but we mentioned this <laughs> surprisingly like 30 minutes ago at this point. <laughs> he's got a lot of tankiness. Blink for blink trade, Shinto. And Panatom over on right. And I want to say it's going to give us a little moment to breathe as the Leviathans fall back and the Warriors maintain their positioning. And a little look at the outside fight where Panatom's going to be looking to, you know, flank. And the Levi's have so much damage and so much burst from both Shinto and Adapting where wherever Panatom goes, if there's an assassin with him, he has to be very quick on that ult ability to be able to get in the air and immune some of that damage. Adapting also has that survivability from Mantle, so I don't think that's a 1v1 that Panatom can really even take. I, I expect Adapting to be the one to kind of, you know, make a play here if a 5v5 fight doesn't just break out. Panatom got his one 1v1, yep. uh, and since then Adapting said no more. <laughs> Once he finished that done. Deathbringer, it really kind of fell apart. Pyromancer, it's the option right now for the Leviathans. They drop it instantly. As the Warriors still showing face, everybody's grouped up over here. And in an ordinary scenario, we'd be talking about fire minions if we were, you know, in the last fire giant fight. Instead, you got to talk about sustain for the Leviathans, sustain for the Warriors. Everybody's full health. Those blinks that were just used, 50 seconds off cooldown, so they might be back, honestly, by the time the fight does truly kick off. Looks like Leviathans backing up a little bit. And this is that awkward fire giant dance as well, because both teams are, are very much aware. It does, the 20,000 gold is not as big a deal as maybe it, it could seem. Fine, okay, even swaps out an item fully here at the very end. That's how rich they are to pick up a spirit robe. But it's going to be adapting, honestly. And, and this is something top down, we have a benefit. He's not going to be around for a little bit. And he's yeah, on he's, the left hand side. Exactly. He's going to be looking to split the map a little bit, not show on waves. He want to try to just, tries to get a little pressure on the map with this. Uh, Oni Fury to get uh, the enhanced waves pushing. Going for that shield buff too. I was a little worried he was going for that left wave, which would show him on the map. Yeah. And, uh, he just goes for the shield camp, which is no surprise. At this point, when you get to these 5v5s and you're sitting around Fire Giant, and both teams are kind of, you know, talking. There's not a ton of, you know, stress put on the game right now. It's, just get, let's get wards down. 
Uh, let's look for little openings. Maybe how do we want to play this? Stuff like that. These fights really come down to who makes the, the first mistake. Does somebody walk up too far? Does somebody uh, force out an ult that doesn't need to be used? Is a relic even fat fingered, something like yeah. that, where it just completely changes how a fight should be? And those are the small things that you don't think a, a lot about, but they change fights immensely. And, and those small things, I mean, relics may be the biggest one, right? It feels small. Oh, I saved my life by popping my beads a little early. That can do it for you. Fire Giant from Genetics taken up. Panatom goes in. Let's listen oh in on the words as he gets deleted off the map. We have to fight. Fight. No, fight. fight. No, we have to fight. Yeah, no, we have to fight. Orwin, 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 Orwin. Go all low. All low, all low, all low. Orwin dead. It's fine, it's fine. It's okay, it's okay, it's fine, it's fine. You got knocked up. Well, listen in, Curse holds true. At least this time around. Panatom. Deleted before we could even get to the comms. Clean, concise, at least, terms of a uh, fight. Got Ololo, you, you, you've got the comms, but as we heard towards the end, it just slowly peters out because you don't have too much going for you. And now it's Pagon versus the world. Pagon goes to the side of the base, looking for a loop, comes into the side with the Phoenix. He's trying to look for a little bit of help. Has to go big, has to make a play. Does we have beats. not seen. Has to hold on for 18 seconds. He's just fighting the minions. It's going to be the Leviathans with one decisive fight around the Fire Giant and a very easy Titan kill at that to take game one after what started looking like the Warriors at the very beginning. Yeah, a little anticlimactic <laughs> end to the, the, the massive fight around Fire. Not much Pagon can do, or Panitz, no, Pagon, not much pa Pagon yeah. can do there. Most you just have to hope somebody runs into Fountain or something. <laughs> really yeah. not much to be had. But overall, great. Game by the Levi's for most points. Uh, a couple misplays getting picked when they, you know, had Fire Giant weren't really pushing their lead. I think as effective mm -hmm. in that mid to late game. But still, overall, this is probably some of the best we've seen the Levi's perform. They they really oh, sure. like took a step forward from just yesterday and last week's game to now. And the fact, you know, Slaney even said it earlier, but like the way that their schedule has been, like Dragons, which he he donated. This is not me. This is Slaney's words. Donated as an easier matchup into the Ferryman. And then yesterday playing the Hounds, coming into the Warriors, uh, it, you know, kind of like, man, we're playing a really tough teams on the back half of the week every single time. They're getting footage on us. Uh, it doesn't seem to have helped too much on the other side. The Warriors, despite a very explosive start, and I, I will say, what was that? It was like a 36 minute or so, like 34 minutes of really entertaining yeah. gameplay, and then one unfortunately bad fight for them. Keep things going, but it is the Leviathans up 1 0, something I wasn't sure I was going to get to say today. Well, we started it off here. We'll see if they can continue this or how the Warriors will answer back right after this quick break. I just want to make you mine. Mine, my mind. Mine. Mine, my mind. I just want to make you mine. Mine, my mind. Mine. Mine, my mind. I just want to make you mine.
situation is the situation how it was handled is so we go to like I, I go to I go to sleep when I wake up I, I have the coach of like messaging me and then I have to like go to scrims the next day where uh um yeah I mean Netro was just like yeah we tried to kick you we couldn't and then like um yeah <laughs> So when he told us that what is this, uh, what is the roster change that it, I'm, I'm hearing, like Biggie told me this, and we told him, no, we are not replacing you 100% right now. That's what we told him, and we kept on screaming because the change, it wasn't 100% made. So. One of the most impactful or, or maybe dramatic roster changes in the history of the SPL and we have a documentary on it right on our YouTube channel, twitch.tv. No, not twitch.tv. <laughs> YouTube.com slash Smite Game. And you can see Awesome Jake and the Oni Warriors inside the SPL. Watch the full video at YouTube.com slash Smite Pro. You can see a little bit of a, a cl little, little clip of it there. The, the, the tension you can kind of feel in, in that room just from that clip alone. Yep, is... and I think that's kind of what the documentary is trying to capture, right? What was yeah. going on, what was going through the heads of everyone being a part of it. And 
really jump it into the mind of Awesome Jake, which is a good time. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a good watch. <laughs> it's a good watch for sure. But, I mean, the Oni Warriors, they're playing right now, and they fell in, in game number one. Yep. The Leviathans taking it to them. They're trying to knock them off their win streak. They'll need two more games to do it, but... And that's certainly one that the Warriors want to bounce back from because the Leviathans look dominant. Yeah, I want to say that during picks and bans, I had two big problems that I brought up to you. And number one was the fact that the only Warriors had their choice between set and Pele. They took the set, they gave up the Pele. A bit puzzling to me personally, as well as the lack of duo pressure, which ended up being a big deal. I mean, Panda Cat had a two-level lead pretty much all game. Wrong, you also had a two-level lead pretty much all game. That's what Oleron provides. And because of that, despite the fact that the Oni Warriors got off to a decent start on the other sides of the map, Duo Lane was just kind of dead, right? Netroid really couldn't get online. He also went for that full shred build to try and shred through, air quotes, tanks. And it didn't seem like the tanks were the issue. It seemed like trying to kill Shinto and adapting would have been a lot better. I feel like a crit build could have suited him just a little bit better late game. When you see how much damage adapting was doing, it was a bit of an issue. Adapting absolutely popped off this game. The Mercury was a big problem, and I think it all stems from the start, man. I, I was very puzzled by the, the option to take the set instead of the Pele. Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the game, you look at the damage charts, both carries from the Oni Warriors struggling. They're not something you typically see. Like, I, I don't equate Pagan with low damage numbers, certainly not. In, in fact, any of the Oni Warriors, but just weren't able to put it together in a team fight this game. And I think the starts and, and the pressure around the map had a lot to do with that. You see it come through. I mean, the damage numbers, I think, speak for themselves. Sot, it, the highest damage on his team, but Netroid down there at, at 12,000. Panda did double that. Yeah, that is, uh, it's definitely something you have to look at for game number two. Yeah, and I think that because of that, it's not like, hey, Pagan also got doubled, right? That the, the Pele diff was for real, and that's what I'm talking about. It just seems like Pele is such an easier god to execute on. Of course, Pagan loves set. It's one of those picks that can be extremely dynamic. But when you look to the solo lane as well, right? Adapting three shots, that is yep. one of your tanks. That is one of your frontliners. It just seems like there wasn't a lot of answers for the crit that was coming through from adapting. You can't match that level of damage. And if you're going to build to shred through tanks, the tanks have to be the forefront of the problem or it has to be like the, the start of the engagement. This is one of those matchups where Aphrodite was actually extremely impactful, right? It seemed like the Warriors were building to counter Panda Cat, trying to get to the Oleron. The Oleron wasn't the problem. Picks a man for game number two. The Oni Warriors, they lose game number one, so they get the choice of sides. And this time they weren't happy with the set first pick, so they go over to that second pick slot. And the Leviathans, they have, uh, they've got their game with the Ola run. They're, they're happy with how it played. They immediately take the Ola run away. Not going to be the focus here for their first pick. Yep, and I respect that. They say, hey, we're going to play a similar style and take away that Kepri as well, but not something that we need to go back to uh, with that Ola run. The only Warriors are going to be put in an awkward position, though, where they have to say, hey, are we willing to give up, you know, the, the, the set, because we don't want to face the Pele or vice versa, because now they're in the, in my opinion, the, the worst of the starts, where, again, I don't think the Lance Leviathans valued that set pick too much. I truthfully think if they had the option, they would take the Pele every time. So the only Warriors might just have to ban away that Pele and see what happens from there. I'm actually very curious as to what the Leviathans ban away, because they want Chernabog, right? That's the big issue here. You have to ban away the Chernabog if you're the only Warriors. So now we get to see my point proven. Will it be the Pele or will it be the set? Assuming, of course, that the Chernabog is something the Oni Warriors need to take away here, which I feel like they probably do. A couple of priority picks still left on the board. I mean, you could have a throwaway ban, and, and of those three picks, you could try and grab two of them if you're the Oni Warriors and, and base your gameplay on that. But with so many volatile picks still up, I mean, even past this, Athena Ganesh is still on the board. They want to try and focus on supports in the top three. There, there's, there's a lot of volatile picks left up that they want to focus. And that's wow. what they're going to go with. They take away the Athena. So Chernabog, Pele, Set, all still up and available, as well as a lot of the gods that we've yeah, seen yeah. in the previous game. And sure enough, the Levi's go right to the churn. And then you get, I assume, Set, Pele. Because if not, again, you you know what? I, you actually don't have to. It has to be Pele in the top tier. There's no way the only Warriors don't pick a Pele. However, 
if what I'm theorizing in my tiny little brain is right, Set will not be a top three for the Leviathans, even if they let it through here. So they could have grabbed something else. But set. might as well lock in your dive. Might as well lock in the Pele and the Set, because that's just what you're looking towards. So now the Anis Leviathans get to play around this Chernabog, which there is a reason the Chernabog has been so highly prioritized. It's because he got some great buffs. The global presence is annoying. He's got an attack speed stim. His lane's great. His early game's great. His late game's great. Pretty much just strong at all points in the game. Now you have to consider the fact that, you know, the Morgan is still up. You could have two Chernabogs. That's something Shinto could certainly try to go to here. There's not many more assassins that I would like to throw into mid, so you got to think about the magical damage for your team. But, of course, Shinto could also just take the Chernabog. And then we could see like a Freya, right? That is still certainly possible here. Say, so, hey, Shinto, you want to take the Cherno mid and then we'll just get another top tier ADC? The Leviathans seem like they have been playing the picks and bans very smart so far in these two first two games. They're taking their time on this top two and three. Thor gets locked in. I think they'd be smart to leave this Chernobog having a little bit of flexibility. It looks like that's what they're going to do. Thor gets locked in, likely heading over to adapting. We'd like to see that in his hands in the past, so certainly no surprise here. The Cerberus has some flex potential as well for the Levi's. We've seen Fine OK on it, we've seen Rongi on it, we've seen the Fine wins in both support and solo for this squad. So I think a great and a very flexible top three for the Levi's. Yep, I actually really do like the Serb pick here as well. I mean, think about how much that CC is going to affect not only Pele and Set, but the healing is so prominent in both of their kits. So something that is going to be very strong. Back to the Ganesh, actually. And this matchup, I think, does get a little bit more value than last. Silencing out Berserker Barrage or the, the Ghastly Breath from Cerberus can be very impactful. The, those tick damage really does start to add up. So going to get some pretty decent value here from the top three. And honestly, pretty annoying for Chernobog as well. When you're hiding in the wall as a Cherno, it's pretty easy to guarantee you hit that home on someone dashing out of the wall. They're immediately silenced. You try and lock them down. So could be a good look here for the Oni Warriors top three. As far as what else Shinto could be looking for, I still think the, the, the Ryzen could have been impactful. So the Oni Warriors take that one away. And heck, with the Thor and the Cherno, the Morgan is still very impactful. Throw the, the Pele and the set into the mix as well. You have your choice uh, of what transformation you would like to go to. Yeah, a couple high-level engages there if they want to go towards that pick. I mean, you've got global pressure, you've got huge CC, you've got survivability. Pretty much like any any set of attributes that, that you want, you can go to depending on the team fight. So it could be a focus out there. Oni Warriors, not concerned about it though. They'll take away one of the more aggressive mages and Raijin, a solo option as well in the Amaterasu just in case that Cerberus is headed over towards that support role. On the other side though, Hades gets banned away and the Freya gets banned away, taking it away. Worried about that fourth pick for the Oni Warriors as opposed to trying to hold that open for their own pick. Yep, smart call. The Freya is still one of the best ADCs available, especially when that Chernobog is gone and the Ulran as well. So just trying to get rid of some of those magical ADCs that would help out in the magical damage department when you already have Pele and Set locked in and you know one of them is going mid, you probably want to get a little bit more mage damage coming through. But you got to think about the Cerberus as well. You're not going to try and pick too much more sustain into a pick like that. And the Oni Warriors say, hey, we're not letting you get the chance at the Morgan. This has gone to Sot in the past. This has gone to Pagan. But with Set in play, I would think Sot wants to take this solo instead. That, I feel like that makes the most sense. Yeah, it, it's an interesting one to be sure. I'm not sure that he found the success he was looking for on the op wash in, in game number one. So to go back to a mage, I mean, the Oni Warriors, they're not one to back down from a challenge. That's that's to be sure. So could could be the Morrigan for set. Still plenty of flex potential over there on the Warriors side. On the Levi's, we saw Panicat on this Rama yesterday. We also saw him on the Soul. This would be an interesting set of lock-ins to be sure. I think probably just a little bit of heaven fun with, uh, with the hovers though. This seems more in line with uh, with something that they might plan for. The Kakullen gets locked in and the Soul gets locked in to finish things out for the Leviathans. Okay, so I was right about the Cherno possibly going mid. Panda Cat has been one to go to the Soul at times. Not to say that the Soul can't also play mid. There is plenty of flex potential here, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume we're sending Soul over to the duo lane just because it gets so much pressure. The Atlantis Leviathans love playing through that duo pressure. And with Rong Yu, 
providing that service damage as well, it seems like they should be able to, to get pressure at level 2, especially into a Ganesh, right? Shouldn't be able to match that level of clear and auto attack damage. I believe Soul's hitting for like a solid 85 damage at level 2, which is just ridiculous for any sort of ADC. You gotta think about the, the last lock in here. Will it be the Hachi? Just some late game hard carry. In this matchup, the Shred might be a little bit more impactful than that crit I was talking about because you're gonna have a tanky frontline diving you, Serb and Kakolin, very easily get to the back line with those leaps. And it will be the Hachi. So, you look at the Oni Warriors composition through and through, it does seem like a lot of dive because throw the Pele in the set in the mix, you're dropping Darwin Pillars, and there's probably going to be another Pele or another set with the Morgan. Uh, so Hachi, you need to pick something that's going to be able to survive in the back line with little to no peel. And Hachi can do that, right? You just get on the mounted archery right away, try and stay away from everyone. Yeah, Hachi has some of that survivability. That you're looking for some of that shred as well if it does end up being that standard dive from the Leviathans. But, I mean, a lot of dive coming from their side as well. Oh, yeah. Colin, Cerberus all want to get in the back line. Then Chernabog, one of the few ADCs that just also wants to get in there. I mean, this could be sort of whoever pulls the trigger first like th that could be the advantageous like whoever's engaging on their own terms might be the one winning these fights yep i would say so and that's the benefit of chernabog is you can always fight on your own terms right you stay over in left lane you, you split push your heart away and then you say oh are you guys fighting at fire giant okay i'll ult over oh is there a possible gank happening i can ult over if not you have so much safety just to get as much farm as possible it almost guarantees you that fast track to level 20. That's why that pick is so highly prioritized. But remember, Yoni Warriors have one as well, right? They, they could always bring that Chernabog and fly over if need be. So there is the benefit of grabbing the Morgan so late in the draft. There's just so many great transformations here to try and make use of. The Yoni Warriors got to bounce back though. The Leviathans, I assume, very confident with the draft they've just gotten. Uh, they've got plenty of global presence, which is just so dominant in this current meta. And from what I saw, the duo lane of the Oni Warriors got pretty much shut down in game number one. I mean, I'm, wor I'm worried about this frontline diff, though, to be honest with you. Atlantis Leviathans, they've been the only ones really going to this Cerberus so far, right? On the other side, Kukulin, it's the first time we've seen him picked in a little bit. He got a 10.10 buff. We got buff, the buffs. And, and both of those characters as well yep. have the anti-heal yep. in, 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 into that opponent dive. Like, those, those, those guys are going to be hard to kill. Definitely, and I think that's the benefit, right? Kukulin doing a bit more damage now, and that's always one of his strengths, is being able to transform in a fight and just absolutely destroy backline. And if you're building tanky and the Morgan, what does she not like? Tick damage, right? If you're trying to stealth around and sort of sneak into the backline, Kukulin's got a pulsing mystery mail that is going to reveal her position yep. just about any time you want so I mean as far as I'm concerned final K's got one job and it's just follow the Morgan around you know just just try and make sure that's there and then afterwards you're just diving the back line as a traditional solo already would be doing yeah I mean definitely some actionable items there for the Kakal and he brings in the kit benefit to go against the Morgan the only Warriors, they're trying to adapt in game number two seeing if they can tie up the set and we'll see with Goran inbound it's going to be a fun one as well. Thanks so much, Frog and Trelly, as we do jump into Game 2. Game 1 was a lot more, not only back and forth, uh, but just exciting, top to bottom, as you could imagine. Kind of a puff at the very end, I guess, in terms of the team fight. The Warriors yeah. just kind of disappeared in the blink of an eye. It was a magic trick from the Leviathans, and it was one that was great for them to get their win. But it means that I am now in a very interesting position. Also, if I remember correctly, it was like 80%, I think, of chat that had voted in favor of the Warriors last time, now 49%. So the Warriors not only have lost chat's favor, but also a lot of those people lost their points. <laughs> a lot of people lost their points, that is for sure. And looking at the second game, the Warriors are kind of running the same type of comp. They have double dive in mid-jungle. They have the Ganesh looking to partially dive, partially peel. They have a mage solo who, as of now at least, is building semi-tanky. And then uh, just a hunter, a hunter and duo. The Levi's, though, have kind of switched up their comp yeah. nearly completely. The Actually, there's not a single returning god on their side. Fine, okay, going for an actual warrior. We've got Serb support. Adapting on the Thor, which we've seen a little bit this weekend, and it's not looked that great. And it was prio to. And I think it kind of comes down to just a lot of junglers were banned. A lot of junglers have been banned kind of through this entire phase. That seems to be a spot that teams want to get rid of in that second yeah. half. 
And I'm excited to see this Soul. I think Soul is getting a little overlooked when you compare her to the other two mage ADCs. I think they're obviously better. Mm -hmm. But I think Soul's like right on that cusp. Her early pressure is so dominant. But I think this is the lane to kind of keep an eye on. You have the Morrigan. We've seen Solo play before. And the first time we saw it, I don't think it looked that great. So it was a little... A little strange seeing him go back to it. But, mm -hmm. you know, Solo's a confident player. You know if he if he's picking it again, you know he knows it's very good, and you know he knows that he's going to be able to carry a game like this. And I think in the past we've seen him go to it one other time, and that's like phase one. And they ended up winning that game. I don't know if you'd say, hey, it was Solo who won that game, <laughs> but like he, they yeah. won the game. He then played Merlin the game afterward. They did not win that game. <laughs> <laughs> and so it definitely shows some mages, yes, some mages maybe no, still over there. Pagon's pretty low here. And the thing I think to, to worry about, you know, we harped on adapting, I think, a little bit last week in the lane uh, when he was playing Thor, uh, specifically, I believe, against Baskin, which was that there were times we saw two cycles of abilities just not connect in terms of against the Ama. Now he can maybe try to find out a little bit more. Panatom's rotated over towards the left lane, immediately has to fall back. Wrong you, Panda Cat. They're just too safe, too far back. And so the gank wasn't going to be successful instead. He's going to be hanging around. Shield buff spawns in. Panatom's already got it, so it doesn't have to be worried about. Panda Cat. Wrong you get to live, but they lose a little bit of experience. Small things. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no big surprise too much is happening, but Panda did lose beads. Yeah, uh, that's genetics, actually huge. Yeah, genetics dashed him, got the beads. And genetics changing up the starter this game. Last game, he opted for the oh, Benevolence yeah. on... Ganesh, this game he's going for the War Flag, which should lend to a more aggressive and more beneficial dive. Compassion feels a lot better when the enemy team is kind of running into your comp. And I think you recognize that. I think I'll get more value from this War Flag. So that level 15 spike for the Warriors, going to be a little bit stronger than Ronnie's level 15 spike, sp spike. A little bit more tankiness, aura protections, but that movement speed and that attack speed you get from War Banner, if he decides to upgrade into War Banner and not Spartan Flag, is going to be insane. And so, honestly, maybe some saving grace. Last game, the desk had been talking a lot about the late game for the Leviathans. And they managed to get that pretty quickly just because of how well they ended up playing. Starting kind of around the seven-minute mark. Now, we get to see what the Warriors have to offer. And like you said, maybe that's a small little boost that, that has a big impact for their late game on the Warriors to help balance that out. I'm also really, really invested in these junglers. I feel like Pele. I'm going to throw Pagon under here as well. Maybe I should just say Assassins. He's basically a jungler with yeah, how he plays sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, aggressive, right? That's just the way that they like to be. And I'm curious if, you know, him, Panatom, or on the other side, Adapting are going to be like the, the catalyst for this game. And I think it just depends who gets that lead first. And, and not to be outdone, I also think Shinto, with how he plays this Chertobog, Almost plays like an assassin where he ults over to side lanes and just looks for 1v1s or, or even into the enemy jungle to look for that True. fight onto somebody. So almost like four 1v1 characters that are going to be looking to fight a lot. And I think it comes down to these power spikes. Pegon's obviously not going to be looking for too much at this tier 2 trans. Panatom just finishing that soul leader. Maybe he looks to fight now. Maybe he waits for those 100 stacks. Adapting go a slightly uh, more aggressive route. Most likely going for that Jotun's. And that's where I expect him to kind of fight around. Shinto going Aussie. I, I can't remember if, if Shinto prefers the Aussie more than he likes the, the trance or the, the full cooldown more build that you get from uh, Chernobog. But the Aussie will allow him to out-trade and out-fight people a lot more. So I, I think I like the Aussie build. Adapting. Looked like he was going to take a little bit of poke. Then he just has to kind of leisurely walk to the left. And suddenly <laughs> he's A-OK. -okay. Oh, but it does give up some mid-camp pressure. And that is where these teams are at. Gold, as you can imagine, with no kills on the board, is going to be dead even between these two. And I think in experience is maybe the more important part. Last time around, we saw the Warriors really fall behind. Their duo lane got just bodied yep. in terms of experience. And so now you're in a, a much better position in terms of keeping up. Shinto is the one to maybe, in games like this, at least that I keep my eye on, because it feels like he just manifests experience sometimes. You won't see him leave the lane. He'll he'll clear the exact same amount as Pagon and the same place, and then somehow he'll still end up two levels ahead. <laughs> he's already level ahead, and he's not really done anything extra. I guess, you know, Pagon still has this wave coming under tower, so he does hit level 7, so they are even right now. 
Double ult down on Genetics. Genetics taking a lot of oh, damage. Wow. Shell is forced, uses his ult. Walking Pass. around, Thor in the air. Genetics probably getting cleaned up here. Yeah, just one just more a little bit. Of, just yeah. a little bit of timing. Adapting picks up the first blood. He has that Jotun's perfect time for a gank by adapting. Now he's got that alt cooldown going to be up a little bit faster. Purple buff is going to be spawning. Uh, unfortunately, he, he just got the back camp, so those still have not respawned yet. <laughs> but really good pressure out. Levi's have been really opting to play through duo both games today. And honestly, it's kind of made sense. I mean, we talked about it, but Genetics ha has even gone on record saying that like a lot of where his voice comes into the conversation for the Warriors is actually in the late game team fights. So right now, he's not maybe as, as hands on the ball overall uh, as you're going to have for the rest of the Warriors. And honestly, Netroid was kind of a non-factor last game. I mean, they just zoned him out so hard that any team fight you, you had Pandacat in and Netroid had to sit back and farm. His tier two was gone within minutes, it felt like. So trying to put that pressure up, it seems like it could be a spot where the Warriors bleed. Yeah, and the Levi's drafting these 2v2s that are near guaranteed to win. If you're, if you're picking something like Soul, you have to match it with an ADC that can pressure with a Soul, and there's just about nothing up that can do it. Olo is banned. Beads forced by Shinto there. Good timing on the dash by yeah. Genetics. I, I guess he's just forced into the beads. And now maybe that is an opening that they can look for. Green buff secured by adapting. Shield buff getting fought over. Looks like it was secured. Uh, I think that actually means... Pandacat got it. Yep. Because he's walking back up. He's the, he's the one who deserves it. He did. At least it. in his mind. And, and maybe, I guess, the rest of the Leviathans. Otherwise, there'd be an argument. Shinto's beads being forced, though, could be the opening the Warriors need. Especially after first blood. I mean, it was very... I'm going to just call it easy, right? You know, you've got this Ganesh with no beads. Wrong you just kind of walks up, ults him. And unfortunately for Genix, there's even a point where his own pillar just kind of stalled him out. You had mentioned Shinto. Wanting to play aggressive, and we see that a little bit here. Just dashed Pan on an assassin. <laughs> <laughs> and not only did he dash on him, Shinto, with no beads, dashed on True. an assassin. And got away with it. He did not get punished, but now we'll see if Sot Panatom can put the work in over on right. They've both become Pele. They're both chasing it down, and they've both got the damage to do so. Kill on the board for them, but a tower shot too much for Panatom. Shinto, with the ult rotation, gets one, and now he needs the autos. You've got adapting to help you out. You turn it around. What a great play from the Leviathans. But Pagon Genetics, they're looping around. Shinto's incredibly low. They can't get to him. Adapting's under the tower. They're not going to have the damage. They're going to have to let this one leak. And the Leviathans, with a great response to their solo gank, turn this around, and they keep things going. Aussie just sustained up Shinto so long, he was able to actually take that fight against two assassins long enough for Adapting to rotate over, go into the air, and land. Ends up being a, a rather spectacular play by the Levi's, and actually they're pulling the Gold Fury also. Net alts in just to get the vision, Panda is sitting behind him. Weird setup to this fight already. Yeah, especially Final K just used his teleport over on right. And Adapting's still over there, so it's a 4v3. Shinto's the chase. Right now, the Warriors are trying to lead the way. Into the wall and out of the wall. Gets the dash done from Shinto. Wrong you, low mana. They've got the tower line. They don't have a lot of health on Pagon. In fact, they might be able to turn this around if you're the Leviathans. Start to get aggressive. Adapting has no looped way. around. Adapting is looking for a little bit. Good wall forces Pagon into an awkward spot. They're only going to be able to find the one, but one more than they had. Kill onto Pagon goes to Shinto. Genetics around the corner. Might have actually overstayed his welcome. There's a volcanic lightning panda cat. Huge. But up into the air. And a great play from Wrong Yu to keep him alive. No and way. And comes back in. This is why you can't let him have the Thor. Shinto cleans it up with some autos and panda cat. Just juking around. Poor Netroid left wow. out to die. And it is four swing. Seven to one. The Leviathans dominating the early in game two. Perfect plays on both sides of the map by the Levi so far. The only death they've had so far was Final K in that solo lane gank, and they end up trading for it. Two for one. And then that huge fight over in left lane by duo side. Shinto is now 5-0. and oh, Two levels up. About to get his second relic. And Pegon's level 10. Pegon is level 10 with just one item. Yeah. Huge lead across the board. 4k gold at 9 minutes. Gold Fury is also still up. Solo may be looking to bully out a little bit. And he's at least going to force the help, but adapting to your own. Oh, no. You got to be careful. Shinto's a big bounty. 
and he manages to juke a little bit. There's the Dermic Pillars, and oh. he gives it over. What a great play. Genetic. And, and Sod is able to find the fadeaway shot as well. A double kill for the solo laner. One thanks to Genetics. One on the merits of his own back, and a huge shutdown on Shinto. I'll take it back. This play so far, even by Solo, has been huge. Keeping his team in the game, 2,000 gold swing just like that. The shutdown gold. Look at that. It is a cliff that Solo that Patrol. That's actually crazy. <laughs> Solo Patrol gets them back into the game, gets the double kill now. 3 1 and 0. Oh. Now they're forcing this gold fury. Last time it was the Leviathans that pull it, but like you said, Warriors on it already. 3 Force of its HP gone. Damage is out of there. Warriors get the gold fury and. Force Panda Cat's ult comes in a little late to try and steal it. And just like that, the Warriors, I mean, you said it best, they're back in the game. I was thinking the exact same saying of just like that, that quickly, this 4K gold lead has been minimized to 1,000. <laughs> Solo getting dove a little bit. You could Rotations. watch nine minutes of gameplay and it was undone in 30 seconds. It might even continue to get it's undone. done here. They're nice chasing. hill. Fine, okay. They're going to find him adapting into the air. There's some low health bars and they're stacked up on top of each other. A good dunk finds one. You need a little bit more Shout. damage though. Finds it and then gets the teleport out of there. Adapted looking great on the Thor as usual. But Bacon rotates in with help from Sot and Genetics. They're locking him down one by wow. one. Fine, okay, first, adapting second, wrong you third, all in the ground, all for Panatom. And the Warriors take it from seven to one to eight to six. And from 4K gold, to, let's make and an eight to seven. Gets a solo onto Panda Cat, no beads by Panda. Netroid doesn't even have to use the ultimate. We have a double flat pen build, the Atalanas. I haven't seen this item built in ages. <laughs> And the damage is just enough. Down a level, gets the solo kill across the board just like that. The Warriors have taken the lead in gold. Incredible last minute, two minutes by the Warriors. Now, Pagon. Yeah, he's got teleport. He's going to be just fine as it turns out. Oh, my God. 7-1. to one. Six kills ahead for the Leviathans. In that time, they have gone one and six in the last 30 seconds. And as they back up, not only do we see, I mean, just look, That's a, if you're on a roller coaster, you're loving that kind of drop, that man. That is a great ride. It has ride. to feel great, but the solo kill that Netroid brings out. And where does it start? I mean, he doesn't get the stun. He's just better. I mean, look at the autos. He's oh autoing for 190. He's down two levels, and he gets the solo. I thought he was just down one level. That was a 12 soul versus a 10 Hachiman, and he just out-trades him completely. And there was no getting out of that. He dashes in. He's committed to that 1v1. He gets it. Incredible plays by the Warriors. They are back into this game. Look, last game, Netroid had a, a bad game, right? I mean, he, he yes. just did not exist. Yes. He was not allowed to exist. His tower was taken early. Couldn't farm things up. Shinto might be in a little bit of trouble here, so I'll hold that thought for a moment. Darmic Pillars dropped. Fagon goes in. That's the beads. That's the Aegis. That's his life. Shinto killed off, and there's no one to help him out here. Now, wrong you in a little bit of trouble. Knock up good from Panatom. Left side jungle right around the purple buff. Has some help from Panda Cat. That should save his life. But that play from Netroid, that to me is the emphatic. I, I can already see, you know, guarantee there's some people in chat like Netroid's the weak link. That was him making sure that he knew and that everyone in the lobby knew he's still in this game, still in this set. And, and you think about this Warriors team, I, I think two players come to mind kind of as the hard carries and it's the double assassin players. I think it's Panatom and yeah. Pegon. And this game is showing where when they're having a bad game and Pegon by no means is having a bad game, 2-1-1, one, one, yeah. not a bad game. It's a bad Pegon pa game. Pa bad Pegon <laughs> game. Panatom on the other hand, probably one of the worst games we've seen this phase already. And then you look at the side lanes, the ones that don't really come to mind. Solo, 4-1-2. and two. Netroid, 1-1-0. One, one but the biggest part is he gets that solo kill onto Panda Cat. Great resurgence by the Warriors. And if you stop two of them, if you stop Panatom, you stop Pegon from carrying the game, somebody else will be there to pick up the slack. That was the danger. One of the things we talked about uh, back in the age of Aphrodite at the beginning of the year was that you needed a hyper carry, someone to link to that, that you wanted to keep alive and that it was kind of OP for the Warriors because you could link to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> like you were just set up. And so it made Jake's decision making maybe a little bit easier on the Aphrodite. Now you can maybe see that in action. Panatom Pagon double. 
jump in on the Panda Cat, but now you've got a response for Leviathans. Now here comes Solo Sot, who's turned into the Chernabog, and Panda Cat's been isolated and left alone. The rest of the team has abandoned him, and it's going to be one more auto. I think Genetics even gifting that one over to Panatom. And a great couple of plays. Again, it was 7-1. to one. It is now 9-8 to eight in favor of the Warriors. They have had an insane, insane turnaround. Eight kills. With only one drop, that was Panatom just a few minutes ago. They get this Fury as well. And 15 minutes in, it is a complete 180 from seven minutes in. The Warriors have the lead by a mile. And we can't even get done praising their previous play before they start making another play. <laughs> this is just constant, just good plays by the Warriors. Final K a little farther up, but he is he's tanky right now. He's got that full Onis. Pegon didn't put really any damage onto him, so he's very, very tanky at this point. Pyro pulled by the Levi's. Wall was used early by adapting. That's not going to lock him down. Levi still get the Pyromancer. But the Warriors don't seem to be done yet. Then there's a knock up on the fine. Okay, he's going to use his own knock up to control genetics and sot. Silence is there from the ohm. And a wall from adapting separates this fight. I was going to say enough that the Warriors are going to stop, but they keep holding W. They just can't stop holding the forward key, and now they are getting aggressive. Once again, Pagon goes in, takes a lot of damage to the process. Wall, great from the Thor up into the sky. Where is he going to dunk Watch it down? He doesn't have any help, and Netroid, who's rotated in, has turned this into two kills. Goes for Pagon, but adapting. It is a mistake on your part. The kills from the Warriors. The teamwork it's from disaster. the Warriors is just too strong, and disaster is the exact word for it. What a set of play after play after play after play for the Warriors over the last eight minutes. And, and I think we see the value of this Morgan start to peak up right around that mid portion of the game. It's not for the laning phase. It's not because Solo wants to play a mage. He wants to have that Chernobog ult to be able to rotate to the left side of the map so they can force fights over there in response to Shinto. And it makes it so Final Key is now put into this awkward position where if Teleport's not up and he doesn't have it upgraded, so that's a 210 second cooldown. If it's not up, that's just an advantageous fight for the Warriors. And it's, there's, there's just not much they can do. And the Warriors are playing around the Morgan perfectly. They're playing around the set perfectly. The Ganesh is getting massive fights engaged or started with the ultimate and there's just very little the Levi's can look to do at this point 4k gold at 17 minutes and you think about the early portion 4k at this point you'd think it'd be the Levi's that have that 4k lead not the Warriors again if you sat down like <laughs> there's someone at least one person in chat who watched the Leviathans go up 7 to 1 solve what 4,000 gold 3,000 gold at the minimum in their favor We'll hold that thought for a moment. Sot gets knocked down over and right. So a good clean kill for the Leviathans, finally to pick one up and kind of ended a disastrous streak that has been going against them in the moment. Some poor soul stood up thinking, well, this game's over. <laughs> Seven minutes in, Leviathans have everything. The Warriors just didn't seem to be fighting back. Then they came back with lunch, <laughs> whatever they happen to have. Uh, they opened up the tab and they went, huh? <laughs> no idea what they missed. And let me tell you, it was a good one. You missed a lot. Yeah, 18 minutes in. They put a lot of smite into this 18 minutes that we've seen. Fire Giant started up. Sot, not available, but does have the ult. Good you play. have to remember that there's a Chernabog. So Leviathans step up. Leviathans fall back. Uh, maybe kind of thinking about the same thing you were thinking about in that moment, which is Sot could just be here in yep. the event that they need him. Yeah, very. I, I like the force by the Levi's where, like, are, are you guys ready for this? Uh, do you have wards around this area? Will you contest? Kind of testing the waters a little bit. Obviously, the Warriors are going to contest that. They see them walk over there. Solo has the ult in response if need be. 4K gold. Game's kind of stagnating a little bit compared to that mid portion of the game that we witnessed. Gold Fury spawning very, very soon. Pyro spawning a little bit after that. Shinto opts to push left lane. He's got that global ult. Uh, I'm curious to see if the Warriors want to send Solo actually over there just to match Shinto. It's not a 1v1 that I think he really wins too much sustain, a lot of damage on Shinto, but it's something where Solo can just ult over if uh, the need happens, if something happens on the right side of the map. Pegon, on the other hand, is not able to actually match that global, so this is just an advantage Levi's. Shinto, up, over towards Netroid, who goes for the stun. Luckily for Shinto, makes it to the wall. Darmic Pillars, though, lock him down. And we've seen how hard Netroid can hit. He just has to get the autos, and there it is. But Fire Giant started, and is already getting burned. There's the Stellar Burst. The drop, it's good. And it goes over to the Warriors, Warriors got it. who come in and steal that one away. And now the chase is on. Can you even get out of here? Adapting to the sky, looking for Sot. 
He's gonna dunk, but he's gonna be just shy of getting the full damage. Find OK comes Killed in. Him. turns it around, Shoulder and he's gonna be able to walk out of here just fine. And meanwhile, Netroid chases down one. Pagon's pushing a Phoenix. The fights just go wrong for the Leviathans. The Warriors outplay them every step of the way. Mm, there is an absolutely huge opening here for the Warriors. This is mean. This is so mean. <laughs> this is this is perfect though. It, it, it's it's mean, yes. But this is what they need to do. Delay this back by Ronnie. Uses shell. Stagger out the kill. And now he takes that death, and he's now dead for another 30 seconds. This right Phoenix and mid Phoenix is something they can pressure. And they're looking for a little bit more than just the bird. Shinto dashes forward, gets a couple autos. Oh what my. a shot on the Pagon. That might stop this Phoenix siege in and of itself. Sot is still healthy, hanging around. Pagon, TKO'd. Kakulin, fine, okay. Deep over there, still in a fight, still engaged with genetics of all people who has just been playing nuisance. Meanwhile, Warriors walk forward, left side Phoenix we saw, right side Phoenix gone, and now an incredible stagger kill onto fine, okay. And it's just going to wait how even longer. I mean, this is, we're talking massive advantage because Fine OK is going to be gone a while when he goes down. Uh, I think this is actually a misplay by Fine They're going to let genetics get it. They're going to let him get it. It has to be genetics. He's going to put a kill on the board for Ganesh. Baby, he's got it. Not a goose egg. One kill for the elephant. Th that was your favorite part about the entire thing was just Ganesh getting a one kill on Ganesh the Ganesh has the worst KDA in the SBL because of his passive, man. That should help <laughs> that's, a, that's a huge least. boost. <laughs> but really, you know, uh, like, just, just overall, like, there's so many things to talk about with the Warriors this entire game. They stagger the kill on the Serb and onto the Kakulin. That's two minutes straight where they have an advantage. 13,000 gold, Fire Giant on five, two Phoenixes down. Gore, we are 21 minutes into this game. This has had more action in 21 minutes than some games that have gone 70. <laughs> yes, agreed. <laughs> there has been so many, it's not just like random fighting. It is, you're trying to find an opening to exploit something else. Mm -hmm. it, it's not just constant 24 seven fighting, it is, just big team fights that it just a lot of deaths are happening. Shinto was five and zero at the beginning of this. He is six and four now. One kill, four deaths since the beginning of this game. And what was the beginning of the end, it feels like for the Leviathans in terms of fighting back. Starters, you're pointing out, completed. And for now, we can talk about the power spikes that leads especially because the Warriors are going to use it. They've got Fire Minions on left with an Assassin. They've got Fire Minions on right. Guess what? With an Assassin. <laughs> They're putting pressure on mid-Phoenix to try and get some extra Fire Minions for him. Sot, Pagon, spotted out. Pagon takes a lot of damage. Has to fall back. Adapting up into the air. Wants the kill, maybe wants the dunk. Goes in for Netroid, catches Genetics. Gets a little damage onto the Ganesh, but can't lock him down. Mid Phoenix still safe and alive, but the turnaround is there. No. Adapting is low, and they're chasing him in, and then look at Sot. He goes up into the air as the Thor, and it comes dunking down. Finds Rong Yu, finds Shinto, and is looking for some kills. The Warriors surge forward, find three, and continue the chase into the Titan Room. Pagon's low, Genetics low, but they've got a lot of damage, and they've got a lot to work with. They opt for the Phoenix, and they're dancing around. Fire Minions into the Titan Room. Damage, it's there from the carries. They've got what they need. The Warriors, despite the tragic early game, turn this around and win in 23 minutes. And just for a second, I think we have to highlight that mid-game by the Warriors and whether it's genetic shot calling or just confidence from the Warriors to be able to take a lot of those fights. Something happened at that seven, I think it was seven minute mark yeah. where instantly a flip to switch. The Warriors started taking really good <laughs> fights hitting like every ability. I don't think we saw a single ability missed across the board for the Warriors. And just a few misplays by the Levi's over fighting, over, you know, chasing, stuff like that. Just a fantastic, a 22 minute game yeah. somehow after <laughs> seeing the Levi's up 4K in seven minutes. Yeah. Man, it felt like, like you said, you take seven, eight minutes out of that game. Well, you have seven to eight minutes, you can make like a Levi montage out of it. Yeah. And then you've got whatever eight to 23 is, and you could, it felt like it was nonstop warrior, 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 warriors. And finally, towards the end of it, you get maybe some breathing room, but not if you're a Leviathans fan. That was just impressive from a turnaround. And an impressive early game. I got to give credit to the Leviathans. They looked really great yeah. until they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you if you're the Leviathans there, what are you changing? From that point, like, like it, things just went so wrong so fast. Uh, I think you have to talk about the double assassins. Even though the early game kind of comes down to those side lanes, that mid portion is just 
Panatom and Pegon just do yeah. so much on them. Oh, well, they'll have to figure it out. It's now tied 1-1 here as the Warriors take game two. We'll find out who can take the lead right after this. Only one, only one, only one, only one, only one. Patience, I'm running, running, running out of patience. There's gotta be somebody who can save me. Gotta be someone who feels the same. Oh. Cause I've been all by myself Got nobody else to help ease my mind I feel so lonely, so goddamn lonely Can't be the only, the only one No, I can't be the only one, only one, only one Only one, only one, only one my mind i feel so lonely so goddamn lonely can't be the only the only one no i can't be the only one only one only one only one only one only one i can't be the only one 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 Today 
They fall down to game number two, and they close the gap. The Oni Warriors tie things up at one-to-one. -one. You've got Frog. You've got Trelly still breaking things down on the desk. And Trelly, the Oni Warriors, they uh, it's, they just flipped a switch, man. Yep. That, it, it just turned it on. It did seem like they just had that ability at any moment and decided to use it, right? Because, yep. again, it starts off, in my mind, Atlantis Leviathans get the better draft. They were pretty confident, and I was confident that the Chernobog was going to pop off. It did. Like, what, 6-1, 5-0? It, it, okay. it was a great start. And then things took a turn. Mm. It seemed like those rotations from Saw were extremely impactful. The Fire Giant steal, call it unlucky if you will, but he, he, Sot made the play. The Morgan ended up being extremely impactful in those rotations. Uh, it just... Again, and the dual lane also got behind. That's the crazy part. Like, Netroid gets a solo kill from behind. And this is what we were talking about, how the Leviathans were going to get pressure in duo and play from it. And they did. I mean, it's 7-1 here. It just did not seem like the draft was going to be enough from the Oni Warriors. But at some point, they just decided, hey, uh, we are simply going to be better. And uh, from that point on, again, there was a bit of a Fire Giant steal where the Leviathans were able to come back in for a second. But... The draft really came in together. Maybe that was the play, right? Maybe maybe it was a, a mid to late game draft that the Oni Warriors were planning on and they just needed some time before they could start cooking. Yeah, it felt like really the person who flipped that switch was Sa yeah, as well. Because, 100%. I mean he, he he jumps in, gets that double kill in the in the first clip we saw. He was the one arguably starting these fights, yep. transforming into the Chernobog. He was also the one that stole the fire giant. I think right here in in this clip, he also is able to. This, and then he this, gets this out. Is a crazy <laughs> clip. He just turns it around on double digit HP. <clears throat> he is the one. I, I mean, that's first of all, that's the second fire giant steal just in this split that has been uh, like stolen with an auto attack. Variety blinked in and stole with an auto attack on Hades last week, and this time Sot just comes in, does it on the transformation in Chernobog. So that's that's crazy in yeah, and of itself. Of course. But also, I'm not even sure they needed the Fire Giant. Like, the only Warriors, they just... It, it felt like after a certain point in the game, they just couldn't lose a fight, which is reminiscent of what we've seen from this team. And that's the other thing. I mean, adapting and Thor have been an iconic combination for years, but we have seen adapting play Thor a couple times recently, and it has not hit that mark for me. I don't know if it's one of those situations where... You just got to keep playing until you get back into the swing of things or you bench it for a bit and look towards other options. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if it's not working this many times in a row, maybe you just want to switch up, you know, go to something different. The Merc look great, you know, for example. Like, I'm not saying you have to run back the Mercury every time. It's going to be taken away. But the Thor in particular has not been landing for me. Picks a man's for game number three. And Mifflin said yesterday, some days are just not Thor days. And you could maybe even... You know, extend that. Some patches are just not Thor patches. If uh, if you really want to go that far, some months are not Thor months. Maybe not that period of time for adapting. Maybe trying to look for something else. But these picks and mans have, have been sort of the constant focus of this set. I know that <clears throat> there were some question marks in game number one. We saw the picks and mans, and we didn't think the Oni Warriors got everything that they could have gotten. Then the Oni Warriors they they get that second slot after game number one. Then they come away with a draft that clearly they were happy with. They, they turn around and win game number two. Now it's the Levi's back in that second pick slot, and I am eager to see which of these picks get let through because so far it's just supports. Yep. Now we get to figure out, we already know what the Oni Warriors value, right? They gave up the Chernobog. They didn't care that much. Do the Leviathans fear the Pele or the Chernabog, or, I mean, heck, Pagan did have a turnaround on the set gameplay, so let's see which one of those, or if any of them, they just decide to take 
you know, the better of the, or the worse of the two in that situation. But the Oni Warriors have taken away the Ganesh, so we will get to see genetics on something different finally this set, which is going to be a good look. As well as the Ares, who has just been extremely dominant just for about anyone. I mean, it, it's, it is no longer a meta where, oh, they have a bunch of characters with no CC immunity. Ares is good. Ares is just good now. Like, he just has pressure. The buffs, that extra, you know, stats on his two and, and everything that has happened to Ares recently makes him just insane in lane, which is what you're looking for. Both teams are okay with playing through pressure. So, Ares, smart ban. It will be the Freya, though, for the Oni Warriors. So, possibly not fearing the Oleron, right? Or just saying, hey, we need a throwaway ban here. We need something to take away to guarantee that we get either Cherno, Set, or Pele. And now the Leviathans have their option. Do they take away one? Do they leave them all open so they can, you know, lose one, grab two? I think that's probably the correct play, right? I, I wouldn't ban any of them in this case. Yeah, I mean, this feels like very similar to how the game one draft went, where I think the Levi's had the same set of bans. The Warrior is slightly different this time banning away Ganesh. But in this slot in game one, the Warriors took set, and the Levi's instantly responded with Oleron Pele, and yep. it led to a game one win for them. This time, to switcheroo, and the Oni Warriors take the Oleron up top. Okay, so now the Leviathans grab Pele, and what is the question? I really do not believe that it's going to be a set. I know I've said that twice now at this point, but it just doesn't seem to me like a pick that anyone on Leviathans is looking to play. While the Oni Warriors are going to grab that Oleron, Netroid probably going to be happy to finally get some early pressure for once because so far this set has not been you know having the greatest pressure over in duel and got a solo kill yes but has not been able to just go into lane and just feel safe right it's been a lot of hiding under tower which Oleron still has to watch positioning of course but your early level two clear is just insane you essentially stack up your two on the first couple of buffs and then you insta clear the wave right when you walk up you will be getting that shield buff which means Phantom can look to play through duo lane early Maybe that means leaving Sod on an island, but wow. the pick that has been in banned pretty consistently so far will be let through. It's going to be the Athena with the Pele we talked about earlier. Athena on the board for the first time this set. Will head over to Rongyu, who has looked dominant on it just this phase alone. He, he can definitely run games on this pick. You think you're ready for the dash taunt? Like, oh, Athena only does one thing, and then it's just criminal. It's like... There are so many dash taunts and you can't always have beads. It, it can be tough to deal with this pick and the Pele adding to it certainly adds a, a little bit of, you get that mitigations on the Pele dive. There's a lot that could go together just with these two picks for the Levi's, but it also leaves it open. I'm a little bit surprised. I thought Kama might be prioritized to be honest with you. Good into the Ola run, been getting banned away in the second phase. I wonder if they'll go to it in that third slot. Yeah, I mean, third slot, definitely possible. I, I would say that's the best pick the Leviathans could have in that slot, but I don't think you pass up Pele ever, and since the Athena finally gets through, they just want to jump on it immediately. The Oni Warriors, however, are not going to let that slide as well as the set. I mean, we knew the set was coming. Again, the Leviathans are not afraid of it. Clearly, they have shown that they do not care about that pick, and yeah, they're going to let it through. They're going to let Pagon have his fun. But throw the Camasots and the Oleron into the mix, and that makes a nasty top three here, which means adapting. We'll have to switch something up in the sense of the Mercury's available. Are you, are you wanting to grab that again, or are you just going to sit back, take two more bands possibly with, with already two assassins taken away, and then dive even deeper into the God Pool to try and figure out what you're going to in that slot? Or take the Pele and let Shinto play a mage. That is certainly possible as well. This feels like a Cerberus pick to me. If the Leviathans want to keep going back to this Guardian, doing a little bit of CC immunity in the all around. But I, I'm also, like, I, I feel like more than anything, though, it's a tank. They want to hold on to this flexibility because right. I'm with you. I don't I'm not convinced they want to lock Shinto into this mid Pele before they even see the second half of the draft. In fact, they might save that flex pick all the way until we get towards the fifth or final, or tenth and final pick of the draft, rather. They're taking their sweet time, though. Only 30 seconds left for them to make this selection. And it will be the soul laner. Not the Cerberus, though, going towards the Amaterasu. Yeah, I think the, the switch up there is pretty solid. Anything with CC immunity, as you said, to get to the Oleron, which the Dazzling Offensive will provide. However, the Serb, sure, you lose a bit of that anti-heal, but you get a little bit more of that auto-attack damage, as well as the structure damage, which is really yep. the reason that Ama is just so prevalent. You throw a Shoguns into the build, rotate out past level 12, 
and you can absolutely just destroy an objective in a solid five seconds or so like that it, it is that quick especially if you have the athena mobility you have the movement speed from mama you can really just show up if there's no ward coverage and go in immediately but as i said adapting will take two bans here he knew that was coming right you you, you have to ban out adapting in that slot and notably the Thor remains open. They, this is not something the Oni Warriors have to fear. They're just going to take away the Mercury and the Dodge E, things that Oleron wouldn't appreciate in lane, right? And, and just leave that pick open. They say, go ahead, go back to it if you want. That's not something we're worried about. The bands feel almost telegraphed at this point. The Morgan taken away for Sot. They don't want the Hades matchup into the Amaterasu. And then as you said, adapting some of those picks taken away from him as well. It looks like they are going to hold on to that flex potential on the Pele until that 10th pick. They'll lock Panda Cat into that soul. I don't think he looked bad on it in, in game two. I think he looked fine. Of course, the solo kill from behind is not necessarily like, that's not the energy you want to go into game three with, but still, you know, one of his more comfortable picks. Yeah, I mean, like I said, when I got to talk to Panda about how he thinks duo lane should be played and why he has been liking just gods with pressure in general it makes a lot of sense it's going to give you incredible early lane pressure as wow. well as just burst damage throughout the ymir and the susano so that's going to be Kama solo i would think right if you're giving set over to pagon which he's been playing all day makes a lot of sense there's no way that the Panton wants to take the Kamazots into the juggle when the Susano could solo. I, I just don't think it's as fun of a matchup. We've seen a lot of Susano solo and ranked in particular, but it just gets sat on so long. It takes a while before you actually get online and start rotating out. So yeah, I, I, I'm thinking you hand Kamazots over to Sot and just let that go. And we see the salty run back for the bottom two, the Soul and the Thor one more time. That shows confidence. And honestly, I respect that. The Leviathan said, you know what? We had these two picks last time. Didn't exactly go the way we wanted to, but we're still confident in our ability. And again, when you have adapting in Thor, you could have an off game, but he, he he's not just going to you know miss the ability to hit Anvil of Dawns, right? It's going to come back to him. Yeah, he is. Uh, I think he has had enough years of godlike play on this. He, pick he has to, earned uh, the right to go to Thor again. Right. Yes, he, sure. he, could, he could have a whole season of missed Thor ults, and I still wouldn't be unhappy with him pulling it out on the world stage. Like, yeah. you know, it is, it is his pick through and through. An interesting last two, though, for the Oni Warriors. Yep. I personally, I'm hoping for a little bit of spice. Sot has been liking the mages. I'd love to see an Ola run solo. I don't think it would be good, <laughs> to be clear, uh, but it would be fun. Uh, so, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see how that draft rounds out. But one thing is clear, that's pressure. That's three assassins and a W key support all in a sanctified field. That is a that is a tough fight to have. Yeah, you could you could let. I I'm looking at that draft and take away the teams. I'm like, oh yeah, that's the Oni Warriors. Like I, I don't care what label you snack next to. That is an Oni Warriors draft through and through. Um, remember, they did lose a bit of pressure last game in the early up into this soul. But again, you got Oleron now. Your lane clear is going to be able to match that very easily. Throw that in the mix and say, hey, we're fighting after that prot buff, that shield buff early on, like level three, send a rotation over there. Should be a good time. The Atlantis Leviathans, though, they're going to use that global presence from the Athena, from the Thor, try and get active in the duo lane as well. That's where a lot of these fights have been happening. The benefit of the global presence was that Shinto was able to get there immediately, right? He could just fly in with Chernabog. Now, right. assuming that he takes the Pele in the mid, you've got the extra movement speed. You can get there, but you more so have to plan those fights. You can't just react and go to those fights. You have to be like, hey, we are looking to fight at that purple buff. Make sure you get over there. You know, we're trying to group up. Still, it just takes a little bit longer to get there. You have a little bit of that global presence on the Leviathan side, right? They have that Athena, which is something, once again, making the, it making its way into the draft for the first time here, as well as a semi-global pressure from Thor. The Levi's, I, I mean, they had a fantastic start in game number one, game number two as well. How do they hold on to that in game number three? I mean, what's the difference maker? I mean, the difference maker here is, you know, using that presence from the Amaterasu towards objectives, right? I think the Leviathans just say, hey, we have this Ama, we can get teleport very easily, whereas you assume a Kama solo or whatever assassin goes into solo lane is not going to get teleport, right? Yep. It's probably going to be blank beads. Use that teleport to your advantage, get fine okay to rotate early. Set is all tied up here, folks. One of these teams is going to take a lead here in game number three, and we'll throw it over to the casters, Gorn Inbound. Thanks so much, Frog and Trelly. So we jump into game three. It is Gore Inbound, and of course, Doug giving us the views in. And so far, Inbound. 
I will say this set has sufficiently hit an entertainment quota. <laughs> it has done great in both game good. one and game two. And now we get into an interesting draft style, right? Warriors playing, uh, as Trelly put it, a warrior style draft and winning back the 4% they had lost last time to have a small advantage with the 52 over the Leviathans in the Twitch Bowl. That being said, when I look at the Leviathans, I think, okay, well, Ama's like a top pick in solo. Thor's kind of a top pick right now in jungle. Pele's been a top pick in mid. Oh, Athena's a top pick overall for your supports. And Panda Cat on the soul, like you said, maybe being overshadowed in some instances, uh, but has been pretty popular as of late as well. It feels like they just get a draft that, that they love, or at least is running a tier list. Yeah, I mean, Levi's have gotten a bunch of, like you said, just great gods in every single role. And then you look over at the warrior side, and it's it's almost the same thing where you have Olo, who's considered one of the best gods in the game right now, who's standing out to me as the most contested pick, I would say, right there with Chernobog. I think it's, yeah. I think it's very, very close. But when Olo was a top-tier god, one of the few counters to him was Sol, because she matches him in lane, mm -hmm. has potential, kill potential. Uh, she kind of messes with the, his ability to use a, his own abilities because of the knock-up on her ultimate. And then she also has sustain potential. So she's one of those few gods that can actually match. Unfortunately, Ola Run, so strong right now in duo, he will be out clearing, but the fight potential could be in Soul's way, or in Soul's favor. And then you look at genetics on his Ymir. And to me, nobody else really sticks out as a Ymir player, or if they do play Ymir, there's just something about genetics on this god where he finds walls that you just don't think are possible. And you look at the Levi side, and it's... Fine, okay. Struggles around walls. Shinto struggles around walls. Ronnie struggles around walls. Panda, less so, adapting less so, but that is still timing that these walls can just ruin fights because of how quick these fights will be with how squishy both comps are. Well, mostly, I guess, a little bit more to the warrior side, a little bit more squishy. These fights are not going to be long fights. They're going to be quick and they're going to be decisive. Maybe sometimes a little dirty as well. <laughs> you just get yeah. in. I mean, the dive, they were mentioning it on the desk, but three assassins. Ymir wall, sanctified fields, good luck getting away in certain circumstances. So there's definitely opportunity uh, for these to get you know down, dirty, fun to watch. And there's also chances that, like you said, squishy and just maybe exploded for some moments. <laughs> I'm really uh, excited. I, I think like you, and maybe this is, you know, the support player in you affecting the support player in me that I also want to talk about the Ymir. Let's do it. I, I just think that, like you said, genetics, you know, we've seen it in, in the SBL in the past as well, where, like, Ymir, you could even be one of the best Ymirs in the world. Sometimes you're going to be, you know, one one in three with the best walls that we've ever seen. Sometimes you're going to be 0 in 6, and you haven't done anything to affect the game. Genetics usually is on the, the former side of that, but it has this... I'm, we said it a lot in, I think, game one, but volatility to it, where it sometimes it just doesn't show up the way you want. In fact, sometimes it feels almost like a detriment. We might see some of that here. Adapting is on the left side of the map, but it looks like he's going to be focusing just on the shield buff. And until we have the walls up, and maybe even to see what genetics is going to be leveling, we might not have too much pressure from that Ymir. Instead, it's pressure in mid, pull back from Panatom. Damage is on to Shinto, but no mana for Pagon means that this isn't really a favorable fight, despite the 2v1. And they have to fall back and stay safe, especially now that Adapting's re-rotating back towards mid. And, and we've seen this this little change happen now through the first two games heading on to this third game where we have seven beads purchases, not a single blink on any of our assassins yet. Obviously, we're going to be seeing probably three at least in the rest of the game, maybe a fourth if genetics opts for that, or, or Ronnie even. But this is a little bit more safer that they want. They want to play to live a little bit more. They don't care much as much about that that engage towards the early portion of the game. Once you hit level 12, they'll most likely opt for it. But this should mean it should be a slower early game, a lot more farming. Maybe they look to get involved around level 5. Uh, I think the Levi's more likely to be involved around that point. But the Warriors really only have duo to play around. Yeah, it feels like that's going to be the not just the pressure point, but even late game what facilitates them, right? Until you get these assassins into a good spot, or like you said, maybe some blinks get online, uh, you're really, really just hoping for their pressure. And it was, uh, you know, I saw, like, Mike mentioned it on Twitter. I think Zap was getting in on the conversation where it's just up to this point, the Warriors have picked almost negative pressure, right? They've almost yep. picked willingly to be bullied in the long lane. Now they finally have a little bit of that going their way, but it feels like they, they 
maybe if not lose, are still just kind of net neutral for where they have been over on the right-hand side of the map. And then, you know, all around late game. Then you then you get that part. Yep. But it does feel like, you know, compared to what we got used to seeing of Warriors in Phase 1, this is going to be maybe a little bit slower pace. Unless Panatom slash Pagon slash Sot just find a really, really great scenario for their, their dive. And it's always possible for yeah. that to happen. <laughs> because always. it seems like they just manifest it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Even when they're down 7-1. to uh, I definitely do think that this is going to be a game that we could see not spinning the wheels as quick as, as the last game. <laughs> Yeah, and then you'll hit that <laughs> mid-game spike where and then the it'll Warriors explode. know they spike, and then they're just off for the races, <laughs> and we're talking about a completely different game. Early portion, though, uh, Pegung taking a little bit of poke here, has that Tier 2 trans. Shinto has not hit the reset button yet, still only has Tier 1 Soul Leader. Everyone kind of farming up their own buffs. Not too much pressure along the map. First level 5s, Solo, Pegon. Not too surprising. Uh, Pegon is able to kind of traverse the map a little bit easier than Shinto is. Can just dash to green buff a lot simpler. Dash to red buffs a lot simpler. But we still have a lot of camps to be farmed. Really no lead right now for everyone. Pretty even game. Now I'm going to ask you this. Because it looked like he meant to, but at the same time maybe it was just like positioning or a sidestep. Pagon picked up green instead of red. Is that going to be something that you see like benefiting him or... This maybe a little oopsie daisy. <laughs> I, I think, think it's pretty good this game for. You don't really need that extra farm from Red Buff. You're not going to be getting a ton of power from it at this point. The HP 5, the health, everything you're getting from the screen buff is going to make him a lot harder to be killed. And, and when you think about Set, I, I think this early portion of the game is his weakness and it's your ability to burst him. And with that extra green buff health, mm -hmm. extra green buff HP 5, it makes him a lot harder to be killed. Especially since Shinto, over the last few minutes, it feels like he's been getting the better of the poke trades. Yep. For sure. So, HP 5, not a value you get to talk about too often, because, like, why? But also, actually valuable here. Actually valuable. <laughs> and maybe going to make a difference, at least in changing up first blood, four minutes in. Very similar, I, I will have to say, to last game. It started around this pace. We got to, what, five minutes, I think? think? And then suddenly the Leviathans just absolutely started finding kills left and right. And it wasn't until they got that four-man swing in the left side jungle. That really opened up a can of worms. And then, admittedly, the um, return from the Warriors right afterward made things incredibly interesting for him. But nothing out of the ordinary. Ults are now available. And you had mentioned no blinks, but Thor specifically might not need it as much as, say, like Susano. For sure. And so do you think, like, is adapting the one to watch right now, or do you think that the Warriors could still maybe get hands-on and, and try to force a fight? Uh, I think you're right to point out the Thor as the engage point for this early portion. I think the other one is Shinto on the Pele. Usually he won't yeah. opt for the blink ever early, unless he just has no CC on the enemy team. But yeah, I think adapting Shinto should be the ones that stick out the most. I think there is potential in the solo lane also, with Solo's pressure right now, versus Final Case Tier 2 Golden Blade. There's just a spike there that they have the advantage with, and I, I hope to see them push a lead here. The wall... Just shy of keeping Shinto locked up. Speaking of adapting and his ult, he's in the sky. Comes dunking down, finds two. Sot and Genetics, and then a taunt from Rong Yu. Keeps him engaged. Pagon's rotated in. They've got the assassin dive, and they're going to look for a little bit of it. Knock up wall. from the ult from Panatom and the wall. The wall itself is what saves the day there. First blood to Pagon, thanks to the lockdown on the back of Genetics. And it looked like the Levi's weren't on the same page with that. It was like partial engage versus partially leaving. Final K was just doing his blue buff that entire time as his team was getting fought on. So maybe a little miscommunication there by the, the Levi boys. Uh, they did secure the blue buff, but they did lose first blood. And it goes over to Set. And that might be the scariest character to have get a lead, along with one of the scariest players to have a lead. Yeah, Pagon. 1-0, first blood, and like you said, on set, who can hit his stride pretty quickly. Gonna now have 20 stacks on his Transcendence. That was the other half of this. You got Soul Eaters, you got Transcendence, uh, you know, the Thebes for the supports, which is, is pretty much par for the course. And kind of relaxing, it feels like, right? Like, I mean, obviously not. <laughs> They're getting aggressive on the right side jungle, but it, does, it doesn't feel like this hyper-aggressive phase of the game just yet. But now that you've got that small lead, I mean, you're talking gold in pocket that has not yet been spent from Pagon. Uh, he's going to be backing. Probably nothing too crazy. Yeah, 1,400 gold, so tier 2 item at best. But 
it's the ball that starts rolling, right? I mean, we talk about Snowball. Got to start somewhere. Up to the sky goes adapting. Down onto Netroid and Genetics Wall is good. Beats Force. Sanctified Field's already down, but Netroid with the relics and great peel from Genetics gets to walk away with his life. Very good peel by Genetics there. Also really good beats timing by Net. I, I don't think that was a full all-in by the Levi's, uh, by how they were positioning, how they were looking to take that fight. It, it, it kind of gave me the feeling that they weren't looking for the all-in. They were mostly looking for relics. So close to the tower line for the Warriors. Very hard for them to get the kill unless adapting gets the best wall in Smite history. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, th that wasn't really possible there. So they just get out. But they get the beads on Netroid. And as Olo run, in this early portion of the game where you can't really fight back all too well against Dive, this is the exploitable part about him. Especially when you have that free engage Thor, Dash Taunt Athena. Shinto can get on top of you very, very quickly. And then Sol's got a lot of follow-up. I think the eyes have to be on net right now. He's got to play safe until he gets his, uh, you know, at least his beats back up. Ult is up now, but there's still just so much burst. He can easily get caught out and just killed it quick. Yeah, a lot that can change in the blink of an eye. As we learned so quickly last time, 30 seconds was all it really took. About two minutes was what really got us the... Shift around. Shinto under pressure in mid. Teleport forward. Ult there. Knock up good. Wrong you with some mitigations. Make sure that Shinto doesn't take as much damage from it as possible. Sot, fine okay. And a little bit of a boxing match 1v1. That's going to be one ult used on the side of fine okay. No stun. And that seems like it's going to fizzle out. Does not stop the Warriors from playing aggressive. They're invading the red buff successfully at that. So no kills come out of it, but they're still stripping away experience where they can find it. And maybe, there's no blue buff timer here. They just want the kill. Final K's one hit away. Genetics plays Ooh. for the wall, but it's a little bit off the mark. And they don't have the damage. Sod already used the ult. And fine, okay. Counting his lucky stars. That should have been a kill. And now you've got so many people over there, the Leviathans. Making a play on the Fury. And net no beats. Uh, there's no possibility of him walking up. Pretty free Gold Fury for the Levi's. Great call by them to be able to, to, to get this lead on the left side of the map as right side is getting pressured. 600 gold lead for the Levi's. And, and looking at Sot and looking how much damage he's able to do, and he's actually able to get the dive out and almost able to get the solo slightly a little under damaged. I was curious what build he was going to be looking to go for, whether he was going to do the full damage camo yeah. or the hybrid damage builds we've seen from the past. It looks like he's opting for the full damage build. Probably going to be a double stack build. This Kama late game is going to be one-shotting. This set late game is going to be one-shotting. And this Susana late game is going to be one-shotting. The backline relics, and, and when you really think about it, there's only one backliner on the Levi's, the Soul. Panda's going to be having a really tough time living a lot of these dives. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Especially, I mean, you've got the Kamazots just period. It feels like he has such an easy time with Bat Out of Hell getting to the back line, add in knockups and teleport from set, and then freezes and walls, and like you said, then we, you just start to spiral. Team fights from the Warriors, that's what we've been focusing on. Uh, but it is these small little picks. So far, it's only the one of them. Kill that Pagon was able to find over towards right. Tier one on right, also now going down. Fine, okay. Gonna get poked slightly by Sot. And fine, okay, as you have pointed out to me, has gone for a very interesting Choice Ooh. of gold, my god, the damage in mid. We'll get back to solo lane. Shinto used the volcanic lightning, and Pagon had no answer. Pagon had relics there, too. It almost looked like it, either maybe he didn't get his two placed over the wall correctly, and he just wasted too much time there, but he uses the beads, and he just can't get over that wall. So maybe he's just unable to click correctly, or, or the wall was just blocking his way a little bit. But really good pick by the Levi's. After that gold fury, after that pick in mid, 2k gold lead kind of swaying back to them. Overall, good map play by them. If you're gonna pressure one side of the map, you gotta make sure the other side of the map is covered, and so far, the Levi's have been doing that really well. Fine, okay. Sot, again, they've been boxing back and, back and forth. Seems like this at this point, maybe both survivable enough that they're gonna be just fine. But fine, okay. Opting in for a very early investment into the teleport, right? Instead of waiting a little while to upgrade it, has it upgraded uh, faster than, than Genetics even has gone for his shell, so upgrading even faster than the supports. I thought you were going to say Genetics teleport, and I was like, he has teleport again? Are we bringing <laughs> this back? Genetics going teleport? But not. He's just got the shell. Uh, I hope to see, you know, Alma getting involved with this TP. 90 seconds without getting, or 100 seconds, sorry, without getting kills on that TP. 
And if you get kills, it's going to reset it even faster. So I want to see, uh, you know, Final Kick getting involved. And with how little kind of magical damage that he has to worry about as long as he's avoiding that Ola run, he's going to be very powerful in these rotations. Those assassins are going to be most likely outdueled. Susano, no sustain. Set a little bit of sustain. Beats forced actually by Pentaton. And he's actually getting gone on a little bit. Ult traded a tiny bit too. Has the damage up to the sky. Adapting comes crashing down. Damage is there, but the Volcanic Lightning a little short. Does not matter. Chase in, and you called it. Fine, okay. Shows up to the fight and sets another on the board for the Leviathans. A little flashier for him this time around. Adapting managed to disengage, but it is the Warriors standing on the Stygian Beacon. We've got it. Three fourths charged up. Bandicat comes into the side. They're going to isolate a pink on. <laughs> Just gets deleted by three. And now you got the Sanctified Fields, but you need a little bit more from the Warriors if you want this fight. Leviathans have been taking the opportunities, and they've been taking them in smart fights at that great wall from Genetics. Separates the Warriors and the Leviathans, but it's still a 5v3. Wrong you taking a lot of poke. Little more damage and sot. Puts that one on the board. Warriors capture the beacon, and they disengage. Again, it just seems like the Levi's are not on the same page. Y you know, the Athena looks for the dash taunt, or, or just taunts, actually. And she's just turned on and instantly killed, and there's really no follow-up there from the Levi's. Uh, everyone's really low, so it's a tough call to make. But you got to get everybody on the same page. Otherwise, something like that is going to happen, where your engager is just going to get picked, and you're going to not be able to take the fight afterwards. With Ronnie spawning back up, he still has ult. Solo actually jumps in. Still has ultimate, oh my but he God. just blown up. If you have one less person there on the Leviathans. He probably gets that kill onto Panda Cat. They don't have one last person there though. So Panda Cat lives, Sot does not. His re relic's gonna be on cooldown for a long time. And even interesting choices for his consumables that we aren't used to, or at least that I'm not used to seeing. Uh, I'm not used to the okay. one of them. The one of them's fine. Yeah, Hell Chalice, we see that all the That's time. That's good. But uh, Mana Chalice on a huh. trans, well, I guess solo laner, trans assassin. Who also them. has a blue buff most of the yeah, time. Yeah, also has a blue <laughs> buff a lot of the time. Not going to be able to ward very much. Maybe that's going to come back to bite the Warriors where they're not going to have the same type of vision available as the Levi's do. They have all those open slots other than the one health chalice. And Solo's down a little bit. He just hit 13. Final case 14. Soon to be 15 off this next wave. Teleport is up in 25 seconds. Gold Fury is also up. Pyro's up. A lot of stuff open on the map. Levi's with a nice little 2,000 gold lead. And this is where you have to start to push it. That 2,000 gold lead is a nice start, but it doesn't mean anything. It's not going to spell anything at 15, 16, 17, 18 minutes. we got to start pushing this lead. If that's what we're comfortable with and you have a level 15 AMA, now is the time to be looking for something. Hell, it should have meant something at 8 minutes when they had like 2,500. and We saw how that could fall apart. So yeah, like you said, 2,000 where it is. Not the most assured spot in Smite for the Leviathans. That being said, they're leading 4-2. to two. It's 15 minutes in. And that gold is going to be helpful to keep them going. Four more stacks for Sot to be able to finish that Transcendence. Just keeping my eyes on some power spikes. Shogun Skisari finished up for fine. Okay. Feels like with him, a Soul, and a Pele, that's going to be pretty helpful in terms of fights, and, and maybe not even just fights, objectives, since they're starting up the Fury, and they get it without a single response from the Warriors. And it's a big overstay on the back of Netroid. He was level 14 with only the one Relic, and it was down. He backs, gets his Aegis off. He's actually getting gone on right now. Sanctified Fields used Aegis, used Beads almost back up, but not in time. And that just goes to show, if you can get it all, you can kill off Oleron, and that's where the pressure has been. We talked about it the first time. The Warriors have had the pressure in dual lane. And yet it does not matter. Down two levels is Netroid. 0-1 and 1 versus the 1-0-1 for Panda Cat. Pagon fighting Shinto in mid, looking for a little bit of poke. Had some backup on the way, but so does Shinto. Panatom's going to go in. It's Pagon who was fighting him before. Now the knockup. Good wow. damage there. You need one more hit. Pagon Force supplies up. it. Dunk down. Hammer. Double tap. Wall off the mark. And there's going to be the teleport from Pagon. Disengages. Good. But you got fine. Okay. Sot trying to play... At least Disruptor for a moment. This is going to be the set. Locked it down. Tries to fight. Ama wins that one. Thor's here. And Sot's not going to take the 1v2. Leviathan's turn. The mid gank on its head. Put the Warriors down. Really good rotations by the entire team. And Shinto 
Got a lot of damage off on the Panatom. I don't think Panatom was expecting that amount of sustain and damage. And he, he got out just one health. They do pick up the kill on the Shinto, but a two for one trade. Good rotations by the Ama, level 16. And we actually have a level 17 panned on the right side of the map with the Shogun's Amaterasu grouping around this fire. Yeah, started, dropped. <laughs> 17 guess. minutes. Well, they wasn't as exciting as it could have been. Heat check, right? <laughs> yeah. Go in. Hey, how fast do you think we can burn this fire giant? Touch it for a second. Oh, hey, guys, the warriors are here. Let's <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's let's back away. Like we don't want to coin flip it. You do have that stellar burst that we saw. It, you know what? Miss out just barely on a gold fury steal last game, and that fire giant, I believe last time around was stolen as well from the, the by the warriors, and so it wasn't necessarily great for Panda Cat's secure, But in theory, it should be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I love this grouping by the the Levi's and how the Levi's have a kind of lane swapped almost. Sending Pele over to left lane, this is something that the Warriors really like to do. Yeah. And with the leads that the Levi's have, they're actually opting to do it with this Athena, also very threatening global character. Sending the Pele to left side, keeping the soul in mid, allows you to threaten this fire giant if somebody over rotates to left, or if you get a solo in left lane and one of the best solo characters in the game, little dash taunt on a panda, nothing really forced. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure nothing too exciting happened there. Yeah. But but if you are pushing down that left lane, Pele gets the solo, especially because she's level 18. So much threat on that side of the map, and so much safety because she has the Athena combined. And then there's always that fire giant threat, and it's, it's something that the Warriors really have done very, very well. They usually like to run this assassin in mid, so they've kind of been the first team, so give them their props for the, uh, like, like the setup for that. But Levi's running it now. They have a nice little lead, 4K, and they're the ones setting it up a little bit. The question, I think for the Warriors right now, is they're down, well, as you mentioned, seven to three and a few thousand gold. Where do you step up and what do you do? You can't be getting caught out, and Panaton looks like he has done just that. A lot of damage thrown his way. Tries to return some of it, but cannot get it off. Instead, put down in the ground Leviathans, eight to three, and now they're gonna step up willingly and openly to this fire giant. He's gonna start the DPS, 50% already done. You've got the Warriors over here, teleported in from Fine OK as well. So a 5v4 damage onto Genetics Lockdown. Wall is there. You need a couple more hits adapting on the side with Shinto, but they can't close the gap yet. They're looking for it. Teleport in is all you need, but Sot jumps into the back along with some help. At least finds wrong you, but you've lost your team. You gotta do something bigger. You need something better from the solo laner. Three gone on one side, four on the other. Sot with the opportunity, standing outside the Fire Giant and is waiting. Has his cooldowns, no ultimate, and is ready to jump in for the FG. Does the leap, tries to weave through, dodges out all the abilities, takes some damage though, and that is all they need to lock him down and get the fire shot, but Panatom's here. Leviathan wow. still secure it, but it is a lot closer. Panatom now might have just conveyor belted a kill right to the Leviathans, 13 to five, eight kills in the lead, three with Fire Giant. And with a comp that the Levi's have, they don't have a ton of peel for Panda, so when Panda's getting double dove on, like was highlighted earlier, he's gonna have a hard time living. He gets off a good Aegis, uh, doesn't have an opportunity to use beads, but it's a good trade. It's, it ends up being like a six for two, technically, because Panatom died twice there yeah. during that Fire Giant. So a six for two, and you get the Fire Giant. 9k lead now with Gold Fury up and three towers to go through. Levi's in a very good spot. They have a level 26 1 in 4 Shinto with Fire Giant. Unfortunately, a slight downside with having no Fire Giant in your ADC is it'll be a little bit harder than you'd like it to be. But a Death Embrace just finished by Final K. Bluestone finished. You got three starters finished on the Levi side. A lot of pressure is going to be put out, put out by them. And it's on to the Warriors to respond. Consequently, no starters finished on the Levi side. Or, sorry, Warrior side. And they're going to be able to pick up a Fury pretty much no problem. So Leviathans continue to extend this gold lead. 9,000 now in pocket. Just just shy of pushing that 10,000 mark if they can find it. And I've got great news for them. There's a lot of gold still on the map. Tier 2s, all three still standing on the warrior side of the map. And that's where they're going to have to set up to defend. Three Leviathans on left. It's wrong, you. Shinto, Panda Cat. And sometimes all you need is a soul in lanes like this. Even without a fire giant, she's known for pushing towers. And now you've got the minion wave. That one falls pretty quickly. There's going to be the gold you need to help start pushing you up even further. Minion wave here on left. Great wall from genetics blocks out some damage. And the Leviathans are going to opt, instead of Phoenix, 
for the tier two in mid seems to be the call for now. A little safe, they're up to 10k gold lead. Uh, it looks like they're maybe trying to get Panda Cats level 20, get his starter, get him to come back. They've got plenty of time still left on this Fire Giant, about a minute and a half before it even is going to be uh, off their waist, and they've got plenty of time to push back up. Enough gold on the map for them to get the reset off, get to their full builds. Bunch of starters coming through, now they've got another one added to Panda Cat. Five items through on everybody on the Levi side, except Ronnie, the, the support, who unfortunately is only allowed four <laughs> items because supports. But a lot of pressure on the map that the Levi still have. I want them to see, still like start to push this lead. This is a nice lead that you have, but this Fire Giant is something that you could really break open the base, and they're playing this super slow, and Panatom's even invading your back camps here playing it so slow. Yeah, they still have a minute 15. Uh, you would not think that they're the team with the Fire Giant right now. Admittedly, it's only on three of them still, right? Fine, okay, Adapting and Shinto, the ones who got to live. And the ones who got to see what they had, maybe not going to live for much longer. Panatom blinks forward, looks for Shinto. Wall wow. just a little late there. And Shinto with the ult gets out of there. Thor, dunk comes down, turns it around onto Panatom, adapting with huge plays. Might trade out his life. No, his wall is just wow. better. The CC is just stronger. Genetics is looking for it because it has to be the fadeaway. You need something. Double tap even. Connects over the wall. And three disappear from the Warriors in the blink of an eye. Double kill for Fine OK and the Leviathan. Leviathan steadily marching towards victory at this point. Barely, barely wall is off the mark by genetics. If that ult hits, Pele dies nearly instantly and they're able to get out of there. Unfortunately, they opt to chase. They don't know entirely where the Levi's comp is. Three die. Should be a three middle Phoenix, maybe even a right Phoenix with how much time they still have left before uh, the Levi's, or before the Warriors, I'm sorry, are going to be able to take the fight. So two Phoenixes going down. Right as fire is going to be respawning, the Levi's are set up for a very, very good spot. We've seen the Warriors come back from some pretty devastating odds. But this one feels oppressive. Exactly, and, and, and a little too poked to end up going for that left Phoenix, but it's still not the end of the world. Fire spawning back up, they get mid. A lot of pressure is going to be on the map. And that global, that, that global Thor, the global Athena, is really something we have to keep our eye on. It's hard to get picks into comps like this. And I love, it goes back to what the desk was saying. Which is, you know what? Adapting, I mean, even go to last week, right? There's some games where it's just not a Thor day. I'm going to steal that from what Mifflin kept saying yesterday. And as the desk said, you know what? It's adapting, though. So I think he has the right to lock in Thor whenever he damn well pleases. <laughs> and you know what? It worked out. Game one didn't look too hot. Didn't necessarily look terrible. But this game, 3-1-8. and eight, a lot of these ults have been on point where they need to be. That wall as well to get himself out. I mean, it's those small things uh, maybe you only get for playing the game for a decade and winning two championships as a European jungler <laughs> on the I most impressive help. team in Smite at the help. time. That has just been great to watch. Leviathans, though, they're going to step up to the Fire Giant soon. Titans are going to be starting to move as well. And so maybe a couple of moments and, and maybe defining moments that are about to happen here on the right side of the map. And I think it is something that we've talked about earlier where the double chalice that Solar Patrol has, th their word vision has not been all too great for most of this game. And I think not to put all the blame on just one player because there's four players able to ward, but the vision that the Warriors have had when they've taken a lot of their fights has been very lackluster and they've been punished because of that. Now again, not all Solar's fault, but that double chalice does not really help. He's not able to get any wards down to help his team out. The Levi's have now gotten this lead up to 14,000. Titans are going to be in right lane. Mid has the fire waves pushing down. Sol is trying to push out left a little bit, just so they don't have to worry about that lane. But a really good setup by the Levi's for the siege. Maybe an opportunity. Separations from the Levi's, like you said, there's a good setup for them. They've got the fire giant pretty easily on all five. Fine, okay. Uses Dazzling Offensive. Wow. Genetics gets walled off. There's Sanctified Fields. Tries to turn some things around. Genetics still alive and gets to walk out of here. Up, up the sky goes Thor. Or is he going to come dunking down? He's got a lot of options. Good dash. Good disengage. So far, the Warriors, they eat a lot of poke. They haven't found any kills. They're looking for something. Unable to find it from Pagon. They get rid of Shinto. So it's one for one. Plus the tier two on right. The rest of them managed to get the disengage necessary in the call to get out. And another two sick walls by adapting, one locking in genetics, forcing an all-in fight by the Warriors, and the other one to confirm the kill on to Pegon, looking to siege his right Phoenix. As they start the siege, we'll take a listen in with the Leviathan and see how they start things off. Can you guys do the... I have ult soon, I have ult yeah. I'm taking it. I'm going to get him here. Hit the Finny, we're going to get him here. Kill him 
clear, 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 clear. I can ult him. Really awesome, Maybe. Oh no, no, beats, no, no, beats, no, 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 and just like that, you hear it in the game, in the game, in this game, Leviathans gonna put themselves up 2-1 with a clean siege on right. These walls, by adapting over the past two minutes, have been unbelievable. He has, not single-handedly, a lot of great plays by the Levi's, but he had some fantastic walls that ended those fights so quickly for the yeah. Warriors and really kind of put them into a position where they, you know, forced to take those bad fights. And we were talking about the Emir as the, the god with walls. It seemed like adapting was the one that is we should be talking about with his walls. Yeah, most of the time, adapting, or at least Thor comes up, and it's like, okay, well, let's talk about the stun part of it, right? Sometimes you get to see what the, the wall part <laughs> of it is capable of. And we've had times, you know, in the past, uh, you know, you'll think of, like, your Osiris is maybe Ganesh on that list. Like, okay, cool, they're just going to go through. Who cares? But in that game, several times, whether it was the stun, the walls, the blocks, adapting, really leading the way, hey, making it way easier for the rest of the team to look good. And now the Warriors, I mean, this has been the conversation. Best team in Smite, are they still that? Are they undefeated? Are they capable of doing that? Their backs are against the wall. And, and it's it's not even they're playing bad. They're playing good Smite, but the Levi's team is just playing better Smite yeah. right now. And we'll have to see. I mean, they're playing better Smite. Can they keep it up? Play the best Smite potentially here. They're up to one. Find out how the Warriors respond right after this. We watch the sun go down over the same old town Like so many times before we Look at the same old stars, battle the same old wars Like so many times before And I know that we're not perfect
Levi's looking animalistic in that game number three there. They just tear through the, the Oni Warriors, and it, it was it, it was dominant. And the reason I say animalistic, Trelly, is because when you think animals, you think of the fur coat. Okay. They're warm. Okay. They're, they got the, you know, they, they experience the outdoor weather. They, they pretty well – we we don't have fur. We need some outer layers, and there's no better place to get those outer layers than at Skull's Gear, the SPL merch. No better place than – at shop.highrestudios.com backslash SPL. You can get any of these fantastic merch drops. Support your favorite team or just support your favorite color combination. I'm personally, I can't be biased against teams, Charlie. You know that. But, right. I mean, I'm a big fan of the mint green, let me tell you. Like, I, I, I hate the, the Oni Warriors, the Glads, and the Hounds, but boy, do I love those shades. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Support your favorite teams. Though. Support yeah, your sure. favorite team. Get some fantastic merch. Skulls, thank you so much for partnering up with the SPL. They make some fantastic quality stuff. And uh, Leviathans, maybe maybe you know, hop on that bandwagon. Grab that jersey because they, they are looking good. They, they had a clean game, game number one. Yep. Clean in game number three. Maybe some, you know, struggling to find their footing in game number two. But, I mean, they went 3-1 in their, in their last set of the week. They, they look dominant. Yep. Through that one as well, I, I'm not I'm not taking anything away from them. They looked awesome. No, and I'm glad we said it uh, beforehand, right? You know, I, there was a lot of I saw a lot of doubting about the king on the Thor. His adapt the adapting Thor has not been looking good. But we I were said, doubters. I said, you know what? We do not doubt adapting. If he if he wants to play the Thor, he gets to play Thor. And in this case, I wanna I wanna officially I'm not gonna say what's the word I'm looking for. I'm not gonna patent it. I don't have any legality here, but. Okay. If you are going to start beads on Susano because of all the CC on the other team, it doesn't look like a good Susano game, right? I've said that to you a few times now. Yep. Never said it on the desk before, but I'm going to say it. And this time around, Panatom does not have a good time on the Susano. There was so much CC, he was worried. Couldn't go into the blink start because of that. You don't get active until like after level 12, and you find a lot of deaths. Uh, it just wasn't my favorite, and also... For the third time in a row, Pagon goes back to the set, but this time really did not find that much value. It seemed like a lot of times there were some picks happening. But then you look back and Pagon's going in on the set with no sort of follow-up. I don't know, just this was a questionable one for me. And props to the Leviathans for really turning around. Number two, uh, the Salt, right? I mean, the, the Thor was a question mark, and we said, you know what? Adapting has earned that right to run it back, but the Soul was a pick that Panda Cat you know, didn't have the greatest time on, you know, ended up getting some pressure, yes, but got soloed last game. This time, definitely turns it around and look real solid, almost topping the damage charts besides Shinto. And we don't got to praise the Shinto. Pele, he's been doing that already. He's been looking clean on that pick. Yeah, I'm looking at the damage numbers, and, and pretty standard across the board. The one that sticks out to me, honestly, is genetics. Because, yeah, you expect a support to have low damage, but right. 3,000? Mm -hmm. For a Ymir, the, the pick that you, I mean, you go second half of the draft, you expect genetics to be a playmaker, putting those yep. walls on and, and starting engagements almost. And he just is not able to have an impact, it feels like. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, if you pick Ymir onto a losing team, in the sense of your team is behind, Ymir is going to be the first one gone, right? He, If he wants to be the forefront of the fight and your team is losing, there is no retreat. You don't get to back up. So unfortunately for genetics, you picked Ymir into a comp that didn't have the early pressure or didn't end up getting the early pressure. And I also got to give shouts out to Final K. I talked about it beforehand when we saw the draft. That Amaterasu was going to provide an early Shoguns and yep. then rotate out. And that's exactly what he did, right? You, you need the Ama part of those team fights and Final K got involved. Game number four. We keep flip-flopping sides of picks and bands. And this time, Oni Warriors. They end up in that second pick slot. And these first one or two picks have been critical to how these games have gone. And so far, the team in the second pick slot has just won yep. every single time, just won. And so, I mean, man, if we're really gonna draw the pattern out, Oni Warriors win this game, Levi's, they get to choose in game number 
five. Yep. In theory, they take it home. But, like, I mean, that's – only Warriors have to get through this one before they can even start thinking about that. And already a change off the board. They they don't want to deal with this Ola run. And they can't take it. They're not in first pick this time. So for the team with the Ola run is one. They, that's another pattern that we – I love game four. We can start talking about patterns. Yeah, like this, this. Is, this is where the chess match officially begins. Right. right? Because the Ola and Leviathans have – a difficult choice to make here. They were given Chernabog in this spot last time. They did not win. So they ban it away now. They're not going to be given it, and they don't want the Oni Warriors to have it. So the Oni Warriors have to decide, is that Athena that scary? Is the, the soul that scary? Or more specifically, the Pele that has been getting through time and time again. At this point, Frog, I'm saying ban the Pele. That is that is where my head's at. I am not. Pele won all three games? I am not the Oni Warriors. I am not feeling giving the Leviathans the Pele. That that is where I would be banning. But clearly they are thinking about this one, and I truthfully believe, yeah, they they don't want to ban it away. They want to see if Leviathans will take it. Spoilers. I think they probably will. I think they value the Pele over the Athena, but I could be wrong. Well, first pick slot available. It's been one that gets insta locked in the past couple of games. This wow. time. Pela's available. They choose to go towards the Athena. And I, you know, ha had a good look last game. I think the ability, that global pressure to come through, just especially on those early buff invades, where you can win that set of pressure, they value that very highly, but that's going to lead into, I mean, this is the top two that the Oni Warriors have been looking for the entire set. I get it. <laughs> I get the set, Pele. I wonder if the Leviathans take away the Morgan here, though. I wonder if that's their their, their game plan. They don't want to give that option over to the Oni Warriors. Uh, it's something that Sot looked really good on because he had the global presence, right? But now that global presence is, I'm not going to say gone. You could still be the Athena. But the benefit, of course, was having that Chernabog, right? That that was sort of the, the real comp there. In this case, Freya and Kamazots. Man. The Atlantis Leviathans, what a night and day difference between just how they were playing duo lane previously to now. It just seems like they are always prioritizing getting Panda Cat that pressure. And once they do, the duo lane has been looking so clean. Well, I get it again. I mean, they've been banning out the Freya the second half of picks and bans, I think, in a couple of these games thus far this time around. Soul gets taken away. Want to make sure Panda Cat has the pressure, feels comfortable. They grab him the Freya. And they go to Adapting's pick early on as well. Now, granted, don't want to lock it in just yet. We did just see the Kamazots in solo. So this could still be some flex potential for the Atlantis Leviathans. Don't oh. want to hold on to this. But that matchup, that might uh, that might influence things. The Amaterasu lock in for the Oni Warriors. And for the first time, they uh, they don't go to that support pick top three. Instead, they go to that solo line. Yeah, I actually really like this Amaterasu here. It, it is going to put a bit of a damper on your magical damage, but do you really care when you've got this much dive from the set in the Pele, which you've already seen work, right? That is the game that they won. The Oni Warriors won with the set in the Pele. Sure, they lose the Morgan, which was arguably one of the most impactful picks on that team, but you gain some pretty decent lane pressure, something that can match the rotations. We've been talking about Sot going to things with teleport that is usually beneficial, and he hasn't actually been able to do that, right? He was on the Kamazots, and before that he was on the Morgan who could teleport with her ultimate, essentially. So I think just a traditional solo laner isn't going to be bad. But where do you go to in the jungle is my question. Things like Kibo and Alquang are certainly available if you want some of that magical damage. But that's something I look towards for, for Panatom all the time. Uh, I think more often than not, he likes to you know stray to his physical early junglers and in this case you don't have that much damage well do you so. not think it's jungle pele right i mean my mind is a blank i don't know why i thought that it was not jungle this whole time so in this case i guess you're just gonna go with one guardian <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why I, I, dude this team threw me off so bad i was over analyzing that so hard i was like yeah sot clearly it's going to be taking one of these. I already said the Amaterasu. Well, thanks for keeping me honest, Frog. I appreciate that. I mean, it's still good. We have we saw Vote on the Pele last week. We, we could see the set, man. Netroid, more than any other ADC, is, like, tried and true. That man plays Hunters, right? Like I, I, <laughs> I, I rarely see him stray out of that box. He goes for Hunters, and that's about it. No surprise there. Yeah, Izanami locked in, and, and sure enough, does fall into that Hunter class for Netroid over there in the long lane. Oni Warriors, they've got four locked in. The Leviathans, 
this could be interesting, Trelly. The Aphrodite Hover, when they already have the Athena locked in. I think we've seen Fine OK on the Athena solo before. Granted, I think it's probably a while ago. I'm not sure we've seen it on this team in particular. We also see, we've seen Athena in mid this season. We've seen Athena in jungle this season. If this Aphrodite gets locked in, I, I, I love that I'm like trying to flex the Athena around and when I'm not. I, I just don't have any confidence in the Aphrodite mid. Like I just no, yeah, it's it's definitely Athena solo if they lock that Aphrodite. There's no way. I, I mean, Shinto has been the hard carry for this team. He wants to get pressure. He wants to frag. Afro doesn't bring that. So if this Afro gets locked in, that Af that, that that Athena definitely goes solo. Yeah, they're. Uh... They're hovering it, and it, it, I, I think, honestly, it looked good for them in game number one, but not something it looks like they want to go back to. Instead, maybe even a, a more interesting hover. Hercules, slot standard over there for the solo lane, but this Susano hover. I can't tell if they're teasing us, man, or if they're actually going to lock it. Okay, all right, they get the Susano in. That that might be a Camazot to mid. Yep, I think so. I think that you send the Herc over to solo. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the cam on the Susano can be interchangeable, but I think adapting much more apt to play that Susano in this case. And then you let Shinto take the Kamazot's mid, which, again, when you're up against a set or vice versa, you want to be able to have range poke and you want to be able to have survivability, which both of those gods uh, will provide. Get a little bit extra healing towards the end of the draft, as well as, you know, we were talking about magical damage lacking. That Terra ult will certainly help out for the, for the actual team fight. Um, so definitely heavy in the Fizz area, but there's going to be plenty of percent pen build. Not going to be the end of the world for the Oni Warriors here. Uh, this is still a composition that they like to go to. I'm just concerned about this Iza, how well it's going to fare. You know, the, the, the fact that her stealth is almost always going to be canceled out by some sort of tick damage or crusher or Kamazot's proc is a bit annoying. As far as escapes go, the Isis is not the best as is, but throw in the fact that it's difficult to actually be able to use your invis in a canoe comp like this could be struggling. But I can see what they went for here. They said, hey, the, An the Lance Leviathans have had duo pressure pretty much every game so far. What god, more than anyone, is able to clear the wave and just like get pressure? And that's gonna be easy. Well, you said it to start the desk as a breakdown from game number three. If a Susano has to go beads, yep. maybe not the best Susano game. Looking at this last pick for Susano, do you think adapting goes beads? Do you think he's trying to get aggressive? Early? No, I, I definitely want to see a blink start here. There's not too much you're concerned about as far as beads. Uh, it's just, you know, you're not up against a Thor. You're not up against someone that can just 100 to 0 you that easily. You have so much movement to try and juke out Pele abilities, for example. And as long as you're staying away from the Terra, gonna be all right i definitely want to see a blink start here if i see the beads i understand the mindset of hey we're gonna win late game we have freya maybe i don't need to get active early but i think with positioning alone and just using your abilities correctly you shouldn't be in too much trouble as a susano here i'm a little surprised that genetics goes for the terra i mean brings the magical damage but he, he played ganesh games one and two ganesh maybe would have forced the beads onto the susano and it was it was still up but i mean he he opts for the terra Something we've seen him on before, yep. and you know the supports have definitely flip flop a little bit this set, but that's the only magical character on the side of the Oni Warriors. The other, the other four physicals are gonna have to be building some pen. They, they gotta, you know, a lot of onus is on them to deal the right damage in these fights. Yeah, for sure. And I think that Genetics is probably tired of sitting back. That, that, <laughs> that would be my guess, right? He goes to Ganesh. He goes to Ymir. Gods that are just gonna sit back and sort of. Watch the team die. If you're not like there, you're gonna be the first one dead, as we saw in that Ymir game. So, uh, Terra can get involved. She can get active early. She can actually use those AOE autos to clear the wave and help out. But also, she's gonna be a part of that dive, which is a big difference maker. So, I'm gonna assume that was what genetics is like. I'm tired of just being the the support guy that's in the back line. I will be. If we're gonna pick Set Bele and Ama, I will be diving with you guys. Let's take a look at these drafts right here. Five gods now locked in for both squads potential to end the Oni Warriors win streak right here. The stakes are are high. They, yep. they could be higher. We could be in a game five. But I mean do you think the Atlantis Leviathans, do you think do you think they they close it out here or do you think the Oni Warriors they push us to five? I saw a Shinto and Panda Cat yawn at the same time there. They are <laughs> this is so this is so casual for them. They're up against the Oni Warriors who have only lost once since like their inception. And they're just on match point, like, 
Oh, you guys want to get food after that? After we sweep these guys, where do you guys want to eat? Like, like that's that's got to be the mindset here. But eh, you know what? Panatom's yawning too. Another day at the office. Never mind. I, I, I lied. I tried to really just deep dive into their psyche here. It seems like they're not worried. Well, you get you get two yawns on the side of the Leviathans. You only get one yawn on the side of the Warriors. So, I mean, that's got to be yawn yawn benefit, right? If if there is some sort of nerf to yawns, then yeah, I would assume so. But something people don't talk about <laughs> enough. They're contagious. If Panda Cat just looked over and saw Shinto Yawn, that could have been what that could have been it. And that maybe, maybe I'm just overanalyzing. But Panda Cat's been on point so far this set, so I'm not gonna look too much into it. I don't, I don't think you're overanalyzing. I think that's the right amount of analysis on uh, on on the Yawns for, <laughs> for, for for the appropriate players. I mean, still though, it's it's both of these games. Well, for the Leviathans, they like to drag it out a little bit. I think they get yep, the lead. That's fair. They find the discipline. They, they they hold on to the lead, right? Which is which is good for them. We did see them, I think, throw a twenty thousand gold lead maybe last you know last week. Hopefully that'll erase from their minds the longer we go out through phase two. The Oni Warriors, I mean, they're they're like a, a pizza delivery man, dude. It's thirty minutes or they're free. Like they're just they're <laughs> they're they're ending the game sub thirty or they're they're running it down or they're just they don't they don't win it. I so, really like that. <laughs> that, that play on words. 30 minutes of their free. Uh, yeah, I suppose. I would never call the Oni Warriors free. It's always going to be a bit of a battle, but it does seem to be their early game is where they thrive, and they're trying to go for those early fire giant plays 20, 22 minutes or so. Uh, before that, you know, not too much. But if you just want to look at late game draft strength in general, again, I definitely lean towards, I want to be able to point at the Freya. Definitely lean towards a Freya late game just because we've seen what she's able to accomplish, right? If Freya is given the space to just free farm, it's pretty disgusting if she can get that itemization online. But I always have a question about the Camazots that has come back into the meta. Still very strong and impactful, but one of the few jungles that is very punishing if you can't actually land your, your abilities, right? Not the ultimate, I'm talking abilities. Like if you're not landing vampire bats, you yeah. lose like 60% of his kit. Which can be difficult. You gotta be on point. Well, the Atlantis Leviathans, they're trying to close it out here. The Oni Warriors trying to push us to five. We'll see how it plays out with Gorin inbound. Thanks so much, Frog and Shelly. And yes, game four. And one that could be pivotal last time around. And honestly, you know what? Let's grand scheme it. Because I was going to say, in phase one, the Warriors only lost one set. But that's true all year so far. They've yeah. only lost one set as a squad. It ended a 15 win streak. Now they're back up to five. And Chad is leaning ever so slightly. And it is narrow, narrow, narrow margins, but ever so slightly in favor of the Leviathans. And right now, inbound. Backs against the wall. And they go four physical, two assassins, Pagon on the Pele. Uh, it just feels like there's, there's either an electricity in the air, and we're going to see something similar to game two. Or the Leviathans. I mean, you look at it, Shinto's also on Kamazots. Maybe that electricity's coming from the other side. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be an exciting game. Looking at the mid lanes, it's very risky characters. You, you think about the set, and that set's a lot less risky than a lot of other assassins, a yeah. lot of survivability, mitigations, dashes that go really far. Pele's an all-in character. Kama, for all intents and purposes, mostly an all-in character, just some survivability when he gets out. And then you have double assassins in the jungle, the set, also the Susano. A lot of physical damage on the warrior side. But if you're having one magical god and it's going to be your support, I think Terra is probably the best one you can choose. She scales better than most other gods. She gives you a lot of magical damage that genetics can actually build into now as yeah. like divine. I would no, not be surprised at all if we see divine, soul reaver, something like that. And this with the Izanami, so much kill potential. If Izanami oh hits two, God. she could actually dash in and look for the kill. Unfortunately, plays it a little slower than maybe expected, maybe Jeanette expected him to dash in, but still a lot of damage. And I expect them to be bullying this 2v2 and still at least level five. So much clear and a lot of fight potential. And I, in my opinion, this 2v2 is gonna be all entirely on the back of genetics. Can he hit a sick wall? to kind of block the Freya in or get enough autos off to be able to chase her down. And this Freya is going to have to play super safe until she's able to get that level 5 or her beats back. Well, there's a wall at least on the wrong you. Again, pressure's there. Taunt good from the other side. And Panda Cat turns some of that damage around on the genetics. But it goes to so like you or show, like you said, how much pressure genetics and Netroid can put on in this lane. 
compared to the first two games where they didn't really have a whole ton. And I have to give credit as well to Netroid because it feels like a lot of people, you're, we're talking pressure, we've been talking a lot about Ola Run lately. He has been tried and true no matter what the meta is and where Izanami might stand. Going back to that pick over and over and over again, and he, here he finds himself on it, and he's found success in the past. We'll just have to see. I mean, the damage kind of maybe speaks for itself, at least here in the early. Yeah, I mean, this is the point of the game that Net really wants to dominate. It's just not scaling. She's not a god you pick to scale, and she's also not a god that's going to play well into the Levi's late game comp. Not going to be able to dash away from Ronnie all too easily. Shinto's got a billion different ways to chase him down and to get his invis. Adapting has a billion different ways to chase him down and get his invis. Fine OK has a billion different ways to chase him down. And there's not a ton of self peel that Iza has, and there's not a ton of team peel that the Oni Warriors have as a whole. It's really just genetics. And you think about last game what the Levi's had and what they have this game. There's really no peel for the backliner. So it's really important Panda and Net play safe, and Panda and Net also push their lead smart, whoever ends up getting this lead early. Well, so far, like you said, it's it's still up in the air. 3-3. Three, three. Slight lead for Netroid, who hits four first, but that's because the wave is pushed under Panda's tower. Supports are just being supports. Kind of doing a solo lane style thing, where they're smacking each other as hard as they can, but they're guardians, so it's not too, too much in the jungle. Maybe a small invade, but more importantly, adapting in a good spot. Dash one from Genetics, dash two, now caught out. Adapting's there, and the damage at Shinto shows up. You've got four all on top of one. It should be a kill, and it will be. First blood over to Panda Cat in the left side jungle. You get the first blood on the left side, but blue buff might have been in favor of Set. Set might have gotten that invade off. And if you see Final K's build, no MP5 sustain. Curious to see if he ended up getting that blue buff, and I don't think he actually did, I think. He doesn't have it around his waist, it's not laying on the ground. A little bit of damage onto Pegon. Adapting still does have the blink. He blinks back in, Pegon's wow. ult off. A little bit of a trade going on. Ama rotating in, Final K rotating in a little bit after also. A lot of abilities pressed. Not a ton of damage right now. Nobody's really got their full <laughs> item finished yet, so... Real flashy, nothing yeah, happened. Real, real cool, real flashy. <laughs> but I, I really want to highlight that. Even though they got that kill and left, they rotated four people over there to get that. Yeah. And adapting, or sorry, uh, Final K loses his blue buff. Solo's got a death toll, has double blue buff. Is going to be kind of bullying this lane out, especially because Final K doesn't have, you know, TP for another two minutes. It's going to give them a lot more, like you said, control on right. And if you have that without needing the gank, either A, you then get kills if Phantom shows up, or B, you can put a heavier investment over on left, say, when a Fury spawns onto the map. Maybe look for a little more. We'll say beneficial and, and something I think that you've kind of touched on, but like the kill that they get, unfortunate that it goes to Panda Cat. I think that takes away some of what Netroid's lead had been. But beneficial is that it went on to genetics of all people, right? So like if you're going to lose someone, he was probably the best one to lose in a scenario like that. Yeah, that's the support thing where sometimes you invade to kind of put pressure on the map, and occasionally it happens where you get big rotations to that side of the map to end up getting that buff back for your team. Sometimes it works out, and, and that's not a death that really matters all too much. Like you said, it's first blood, so it gets Freya back into the game a tiny bit. But that's the side that the Levi's are not putting a lot of that pressure onto. They really think that they do, if they get a little bit of farm onto this Freya, don't let this uh, Izza get ahead, that they're going to be a lot healthier over here, and I, I completely agree. I think you look at this matchup, this is a matchup where you want that Freya to be at least even if she falls behind. There is always possibility that she gets bullied under tower, and then you have a behind Freya. Maybe necessary. Is it Frog said? And Charlie really liked was 30 minutes or they're free. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> that's is. the Warriors here, so they got to pick up the pace. Game two, 23 minutes, and they turned that one around. Although, as Slaney was also kind to point out as he walked by at one point, it was a pretty massive throw from the Leviathans. A lot of people mentioned that even on Twitter. I saw and in chat. Just an unfortunate scenario for him to be put in that turned things around so heavily in favor of the Warriors. Now, though, get a little bit of a... I almost said movie setup, which I guess it kind of is, right? We're in the, the build-up to the action. Waiting to see where these teams go, and it's going to be on to Shinto. Genetics misses the stun. Pagon has the damage. Dash forward, though, with the Volcanic yeah, Lightning, and Genetics has what he needs. They need a little more, though. Knock up good from wow. adapting. Pulls one back. One for one mid for mid. And adapting, make sure things aren't silent. And now the duo lane getting active. Netroid put down in the ground. Panda with a second kill this game. Starting to look bad for the Warriors six minutes in.
Wrong you on this Athena might be one of the most clever players when it comes to using the ultimate. He doesn't always get hyper focused on something. He looks for that play in mid, and then he ults over to the left lane. Panda's already beating down on Netroid a little bit. Net's beads are forced, and then it's just a free kill as long as Ronnie can hit taunt. And you know a player like Ronnie's not missing taunt <laughs> ever. <laughs> now we have two kills onto the Freya, up a level. And the opposite side of the coin where we talk about Net, or, or more so the Levi's want to get Panda not behind Net. The opportunity if you get Panda ahead of Net means this is a matchup that Hayes and Freya is just going to be running Izzy down. Yeah, suddenly we're having a different conversation than we were before, right? It's not, man, Netroid looks really good. They've got all this pressure. This Freya is going to be, you know, a little delayed. But, you know, level five, maybe you get the safety. You've got your beads, but but you're not going to control this lane. Now it's Panda Cat's lane. And that is going to continue and hold on until either Net makes some massive play or you get a big rotation over here. Neither jungler nor mid, Panatom or Pagon from the Warriors have looked over towards left yet. I think Net's going to need the assistance if anything's going to happen over there. The assistance right now, though, it's in solo lane. Fine, okay. Who you had mentioned. At least no MP5. Doesn't seem to need it. Has the Herc healing. It seems to be just fine. That Golden Blade start. And just turning around and, and seemingly taunting the Warriors into a fight. Now you've got a massive rotation. 4v4 in the right hand jungle. Wrong Yu seems to be the target for the Warriors. They start it up, they burn him down, but they've got a low health bar. Pagon needs one more hit and is able to find it. Genetics picks up a third for himself, a third for his team as he keeps finding the kills. Now he's isolated between two. They're going to get a shutdown on the support. And more importantly, they go two for two. And, and that's. A fight that happens really well by the Warriors, but it also seems like they oversave adapting, actually getting the dash uh -oh. off. Wow. That was just barely narrow margin. <laughs> just barely. Good play by adapting. Maybe looking no to way. stop the backs. Can't really do it. Both get their backs off. Uh, but that fight, really good start off by the Warriors. It, it seems like they, are, they weren't really on the same page where Genetics was still playing forward as the other two kind of retreated and went back to their blue buff. And whether it's a miscommunication or just a genetics think he's not going to take enough damage there to be threatened, it's a it's a somewhat costly play that makes that two for one trade for a two for two, and then adapting is able to put a, a little bit more pressure by actually just chasing him down and stopping backs for a little bit and almost getting that kill. Uh, there was a world yeah, if he had his ult, I guarantee he dives that tier one too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, there's a there's a different universe where adapting walked away from that with two more kills and a two for one. Uh, quickly changed into a four for two in favor of the Leviathans, but we don't live in that world right now. It's five to three. The Leviathans, three kills on adapting, two over to Panda. It hasn't given a massive lead. It's 1,400 gold, something that is, as we have mentioned in the past, actually pretty manageable from the Warriors, at least in their position. But the position needs to stay actually improve, I think, honestly. It's not just the gold down, it's the fights that have been going wrong. Purple buff invade from the Leviathans. Whoop onto genetics. There's a dark portal locked down onto Panda Cat. They force the ult. Ping on Panatop and Shinto on their way towards left. Tier 1 tower is up. And it doesn't seem like the dive from the Warriors is going to be there. So the Assassin's just a little too slow to the party. The Leviathans get to walk away. Relics, though, ult down for Panda Cat maybe presents an opportunity in the future. Yeah. Big beads pull there, especially Panicat using ult. The Warriors really use nothing. Dark Portal's not a huge, contested, get this ultimate down for those fights type of ultimate. It's more a slight trade ultimate with maybe some kill potential if you try to focus that guy. Adapting Ronnie actually looking for Panatom. Beads are available, but it just doesn't opt to use them. Nearly one-shots him, gets out. Good pick by the Levi's. Again, just kind of all over the place. Ronnie on this Athena really makes his character look like one of the best supports in the game right now. He's got that breastplate rush, a lot of damage on his genetics, dash in, he gets his ult off. Getting very low, dash is coming back up, Panda Tom not able to pick up the kill. Actually, Net oh, wow. churning the kill, getting on the Panda Cat. Ronnie dash coming back up soon, gets the dash off, adapting, peels him out. All to use, Pegon kind of rotating over Shinto, walking uh -oh. back towards mid, and Ronnie gets killed solo with the rotation, Gold Fury available. Really, really good play by the solo by the, by the wall well, by the solo trolls because right now that was a solo troll rotation right there. Now they will be able to get the gold fury. The warriors now back in the game after a really, really strong early game by the Levi's. And being able to get there, like you said, immediately you've got solo troll over here and you just got a couple of great kills if you're the warriors. 
A duo lane killed off, so the Fury goes the way of the Chaos team. And now they are looking pretty solid. Now, six kills on the board for one team, five kills on the board for another, four on individual players. Genetics of all things, four, two, and one. Uh, but right now, maybe the one to kill, the one to stop, especially after getting a stop on the Freya. Adapting, four, zero, and one. He's been aggressive. And if the Warriors are going to win fights, it's either kill him or do what you just did and have Solo rotate seemingly out of nowhere to stop these fights. And I don't even know where he teleported to. It's almost like he ter teleported to that purple buff ward that just despawned. And then he just walks through tower and walks through and gets that free kill. And it, and it mostly was a free kill. Ronnie had already used dash. Nothing was really available there. And exactly that. They have to play around Solo Patrol's rotations when he makes them. Because he's a very, very good rotator, but sometimes he over-rotates too much, so they have to be making plays when he comes over. He's got now a two-level deficit, well, one level just went down to, and he's still looking to rotate a lot. So I'd expect, if the Warriors do opt to fight, they're going to try to not fight when Final K is able to rotate to it. He hasn't opted for the full upgraded TP as Solo Troll has, so I think that is a big kind of contention spot where one has upgraded TP and one's TP is still not upgraded. Now we're in a Position, specifically with adapting, this could get awkward real quick. Panda Cat whoop onto Netroid. Dash is good, but like you said, he can chase down, force the invis out of there, gets the damage, needs a little help though, adapting, getting low, and he's got the help that's necessary. Panda Cat kills off Netroid up into the sky, shots down, raining hell onto genetics. Meanwhile, Pagon dies over in wow. mid. Panatom trades that one out, so they go one for one. And one part of the map, but they go two for none in the rest. Makes it three for one. Levi's lead nine to six. And a couple of clean engages from them are going to give them a lot of pressure over and left. Maybe even the tower if they can get it. Looks nah, like they, they want one minion. I think they want to keep it alive right now to have part of this wave actually die to the tower before Net can even get there. Kind of keep some farm away from him. But just for a second, I want to take a look at the Warriors mid jungle. We've seen Pegon run the set a lot. Yeah. And this game, they opt to put Pele mid to kind of match what Shinto's been doing. Shinto plays a lot of Pele in mid. And it doesn't seem to be working out all too well. You have 0 3 4 on Pegon. Kind of been bullied out by Shinto, just got soloed by him. Panatom came by and cleaned it up for a trade. Maybe some. I don't want to say confidence issues, but maybe something where they, they opt for a change that didn't need to be made, because I think the set in mid has looked fantastic. Warriors uh, picking up the pyro, evening the game up, even though they're down in three kills. But the set not being in mid, it feels like they she made that change for not really a big reason. I think Pegon has played really well in the set. Maybe mismanagement of some resources there. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, like you said, they just got the pyromancer. They keep things up, even in terms of gold, despite the kills. Unfortunately, the amount of times that we've seen late game Shinto make huge differences, although I will have to say the same thing for Pagon, can be there. And if I had to make a bet just on current KDAs, 1, 2, and 4 versus 0, 3, and 4, you're definitely leaning towards Shinto right now. And as the desk said, and as you've kind of highlighted, it feels like it's a, a small ticking time bomb. And the part problem, and the hardest part is, uh, something that you actually just highlighted to me w immediately first off, Breastplate, I didn't even notice from Wrong You. So that taunt's coming up faster. But then also a Sovereignty. And then also now another Breastplate, but this time of Regrowth, as well as a Breastplate up there for Fine. Okay, I mean, you can just stack physical protections. And then Wrong You can do that. Forces an ult from Pagon in mid on the disengage because his taunt is too strong, and what are you going to do in response? You're not dealing enough damage to him. And you also look at Final K at this point, the double breastplate build. If he rotates to this fight with Net's build as is, actually Net just finishes the XE, so it's a slightly different story where they actually have some percent shred now. Gen X the only one here, I guess Set and Ama somewhat close, getting a little burned by the Levi's. Fury. Getting low in a dangerous position. No secure just yet. The Warriors are able to secure that one for themselves. Ama comes in, gets a stun. Wrong you deleted off the board. Now you need a little bit more health bars low on the side of the Warriors, and the Leviathans are taking advantage of that. They go one for one. Wrong you traded out for Pagon, but the Fury, a huge win for the Warriors and a game where they have been suffering. Fine, okay, still chasing. I think this one's going to fizzle out. In fact, Panatom. Actually, might have put himself in a bad spot. Whooped out, has to teleport away. 
Looks like they're chasing out. Wow, yeah, no, actually going to continue. Stick to this, commit. See if they can find something. All of a sudden, this Fury could fall apart. Wow. If that knock-up connects, different conversation. Doesn't. Leviathans lose the Fury, trade one for one in terms of kills. With how this game feels, it really seems like it's a bigger gold difference than it is right now. 600 gold in favor of the Levi's, but you look up and down on the on the KDs. 1-1-3 one, one, in solo, 5-0-2 oh, in jungle, 3-1-2 in the ADC role. I mean, your support's 0-3-7. Oh, you're never making a big deal about that, but they're only up 500 gold. A lot of, you know, global gold has gone towards the Warriors. Pyro once, Gold Fury now again. Uh, they have that right tier one tower. This game could be a completely different story if we're talking about secured objectives by the Levi's or not giving up that pyro even though they had pressure on that side of the map. That'd be, I mean, a pretty massive lead. Now you got to think about it as well. If the Warriors have kept it even because of their ability to control the objectives, or I guess in that last case it wasn't control, it was more to steal away <laughs> out from under the noses of the Leviathans. Adapting. Worth a ton right now. 5-0. and oh. You have to think that could be enough to set them pretty far ahead. Genetics, good wall, not for the stun, but really just a block Panda Cat with the pulse. Keeps themselves on the beacon, and the Warriors are going to secure that one. Pagon pushed against wow. the wall. Boulder's good in terms of damage. Knock up, ult, and that's the disengage from the mid laner. It should be the disengage from the Warriors. Tier 1 in mid, pressured out by the Leviathans. They're going to take that. Get a little bit of gold in their pockets. Fall back. Pyro is going to be spawning in. They have the timer for it, so they should be able to start this up immediately. And with how Flying OK is itemizing right now, and the only actual DPS against him that matters is Izza, I would expect Fine to kind of run this next portion of the game. Even though Izza has that pen shred, there's still enough protections that Fine OK has where, even if he is getting shredded a little bit, he's going to be very, very hard to deal with. I mean, last time we saw the Hercules where there was no true tank killing potential was Ducky on the, on the Hercules, and he actually set yeah. up that huge dunk for, for Oath. So at this point, final K is very important. And then on the opposite side of things, genetics, I think, uh, is very important for the Warriors as their only magical damage. He's also 4-3-2, slightly ahead of Rongyu. And his build is getting to a spot where he's got the binding. It looks like he's opting for a divine. I know he prioritizes divine over Deso. They also need a little bit of anti-heal. But I think that is the spike they're going to be kind of playing around is, is this divine spike or this first starter item spike by genetics, and at that point, I think that's when the the game could kind of change a little bit, where the warriors might even be, you know, stronger in fights. Fire giant started here by the Leviathans. Final case on zone duty. Meanwhile, Shinto's looking wow. for a solo kill, almost finds it against Pagon, but that's a knockout nonetheless. He's going back to base, so you've got an advantage. Fire giant still held on to at this point. They weren't DPSing it the entire time, so it's still sitting pretty high health. Just a little over three-fourths, maybe call it 80%. Dropped one more time by the Leviathans. Shinto gets that kill. You know they go in on it, unfortunately, yep. because it falls flat. Leviathans not feeling confident. Do steal away a blue buff, but not able to get the, the big objective on their mind. Yeah, not having a, a true ADC makes it a little hard to do Fire Giant. Freya! Kills gods very easily, struggles a little bit with the, the more objective-based things. Uh, just for a second, can we take a look at damage? I'm very curious if Pegon has actually been doing much of ulting in. I guess he's got 10,000 damage. It feels like a lot of times I've seen Pegon, it's been him ulting away from yeah. Shito and ulting out. But a couple of those team fights must have been just a lot of spread damage. And I guess Panatom is kind of a, a slightly more one to highlight. Only 5,000 damage on the jungle set. Hasn't gotten too involved yet. Yeah, that's honestly... Like you said, kind of a, a maybe hurt deal. If you look at the first deal, like 0 and 4 for Pagon doesn't look great. The 5, though, really helps, at least offset it. It's still not a great KDA, but it at least gives them a little bit. Maybe they're going to do a little more here in mid. The chase is actually on. Sot, dazzling offensive, doesn't get the stun, forces Panda Cat into the sky. He returns a little bit of damage, adapting, looping around the side. He's 5, 0, and 2, and he's going to look to try and extend that good knockup pull back in. Pagon tries damage. to spread some damage, but it's Shinto who shuts him down before he can start. And now, spread around. You've got a lot of low health bars on the Warriors, and it's just fallen left and right. Wrong you, Shinto. Call him out. They're all picking up kills. Shutdown kill from Sot at least gets rid of adapting in response. But the Leviathans, they've got bigger targets on their mind than finding and chasing the these kills tier two immediately where they had minions 
right behind him. Not a lot of damage. Can't go for the Phoenix just yet, but a 4v2 for 10 more seconds. They've got control. No way. He's just going to get his TP stopped. <laughs> I thought Final K was going for a lot more. Just Maybe they will. Him. They still got some people here. Sot, no, Panda Cat has no Panda's mana. Panda has no mana. Is this a worthwhile trade? It's just good or wasting chase? time by Solo. It's Panda not getting his back off means he's still not going to be coming back. Panatom is actually going to be spawning soon. Fire is no longer a threat for the Levi's. It's not something that they can do. And actually, the Warriors are opting to pull this. Both Ama is a here. 4v2 setup. Three people walking from base yeah. for the Levi's. Not getting burned too much. Looking between the Fire Giant, 3 4 health. Maybe the rest of the Levi's. Instead, it is a pause, as you mentioned. The rest of the Leviathan's now finally there, but I thought it was a little goofy from Sot. And, I, you know, at least the, the teleport, or it looks silly, right? The because at, the, at the, the end of the day, where are you, where are you going, man? Yeah. <laughs> what are you trying yeah. to do? But then it turns from this, haha, I'm Ama, oh no, you stopped my teleport, into, all right, bet. <laughs> what are you going to do I'm in the next 30 seconds? Back. Nothing. That's right. You're going to run down mid and look like fools. And so at least keeps him occupied, as you mentioned. To, to keep him there. So now they're in a good spot. Boulder thrown out. Pyromancer seems to be the option. Uh, but they're going to stare at each other for just a second. And I think right now, if we look at this at this level, the items with the Warriors, they're not in a great spot. I, I think right now their game plan should be slow this game down as much as they can. Level 14 on genetics, only one other level 20, same as the Levi's. But the Levi's items are just a lot stronger because of the four physicals on the Warriors. You want to slow this fight down, try not to take the fight, and just delay this pyro as long as you can. Fine, okay, goes in. He's looking for a pushback. Finds it on the side. Let's listen to the Leviathans as they take the fight. I got poked a little bit as well. Careful. The pyro, the pyro, the pyro. Nice. Can we go? Go in, go in, go in, go in, go in. Get the fucking, get the fucking. Is he not? Is he? Luke Pele. I hit Izzy. I hit Izzy. Can we go, Izzy? That's yeah, terrible, careful. Okay, chill, chill, chill. I wanted to be guys. I'm low, I'm low. Can we help Sheeta? Can we help I didn't hit him. Sheeta, Sheeta. One HP, one HP. I'm back, I'm back. One HP, guys. Is he right here? Is he right here? I'm low, guys. Let's okay. just reset. I have full when I get back, by the way. I'm going to censor it for for part of it, but the, the get the get in. Get in. That, there we go. That's the better way to censor it. A uh, lot of calls, right? Get in there. Honestly, a lot of damage gets thrown out. Nine players all injured towards the end of it. Only one of them falls, though, and that's wrong. You. Uh, but it shows where the Leviathans, I mean, how instantaneously you use a dash on the Warriors, and it feels like they're just going to bring the fight to you, and you have very little time to react. Yeah, and with that little advantage they get off that Pyro fight, they're looking to pull this in a 5v4. Unfortunately, Ronnie has ult, so this Fine. is a 5v5. Fine, okay, he's here. Like you said, Ron Yu has ult. Metroid's kind of low, and that, I think, is enough for the Warriors to say, no, 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 we can't do this. Instead, knock up, pull back. But it's on to Sot, so tanky targets, uh, unsurprisingly hitting tanky targets. Yeah, that's the soul lane fight at this point <laughs> in the game, where they're just like hitting each other a little bit. Got to get that damage number up a little bit. But that's perfect for the Warriors. That fight couldn't have gone any better for the Warriors. I think if they play that any slightly different, we're talking about a completely different game where the Warriors are actually having three, four down there. Beacon's going to spawn on left. Sorry, that's I was just like, I was oh, looking yeah, for like, yeah. where's the Titan going to be going? Yeah, we'll be going down left, which is something that you have to play around. And now the Warriors have delayed this spot. About three minutes ago, we were talking about, True. we want the Warriors to delay this game. They've got two level 20s now. Solo's finished his starter. Panatom's finished his starter. we got a Power Pot and Izza actually opting for that before the starter. So a big fight might be breaking out here for the Warriors. Maybe they're going to look to to pull this objective. Five, four strong on the right side. Genetics just got his back off. Going to be coming out of base. A lot of resets out for the Warriors. Getting some vision. Getting ready for this Fire Giant. We're almost at the point where we're talking about an even game. We got starters finished on both supports. Levi's looking to pull, and they got a lot of damage. Yeah, this is what you said, though. It's a little slower than if you had a traditional hunter, but it's still 50% on the fire giant. Low enough. Titans now going to start marching down left, but the fight is here in the FG pit. Leviathans burn down the fire giant, and now they just have to escape. Fine, okay, surrounded like sharks in the water. The warriors are swarming, but they need a little bit more for damage. Mitigation is coming through, and a great turnaround from the Leviathans. They find one, they find two, they find three, all in the blink of an eye. Double kill for adapting, and the chase continues on. Genetics is the next target. Knock up just off the mark. Stun from Genetics, good for the disengage, and now the Leviathans have to figure out where to get aggressive. Two, half 
health tier 2 towers on the other side of the map, map to take down. All Phoenix is still standing. And, of course, the Titans, not in the Titan room. Genetics is the main goal. They want one more kill. And oh, on top wall. of that, it's going to be staggered out. Great wall. Buys a little bit of time, but maybe favors the Leviathans. A huge swing, four down on the Warriors and the Fire Giant. And after the King on Thor in Game 3 as a performance for the ages, Game 4, he comes back with a 7-1-7 seven, seven stat line. 14 of their 17 kills he's been involved on. Only one death. And you look at the opposite side, 1-3-6 on Panaton, 0-6-6 yep. six, six on Pegon. Yep. We compare these assassin stat lines, we compare what they've been doing in these fights. Heavily, heavily favored towards the Levi's. And if you think about these teams, actually a lot of damage on a solo. Dash was still up. They've got a lot to chase him down. Dazzling offensive used. It's going to stun out fine. Okay, knock up from adapting. Actually pretty good. Forces Sot into a bad spot. They've got the Order Titan just beside him. Not a whole lot to do this. Adapting's going to have to run back the old-fashioned way. But you got fine, okay. You got wrong, you. And again, you've got your Titan and soon to be a Panda Cat joining you. Maybe not the most proficient and prolific tower pushers we have seen in the history <laughs> of Smite right here. So the Warriors set up a pretty hard defense around this tier two, and they're going to be able to maintain it. And, and if we look at how this siege is going to work, you only have one true ranged god on the Levi's. Athena obviously has passive. We're not going to count that. Yeah. So all you really have to get this Phoenix without actually taking a fight is the fray to poke it down. I, I'm, I'm wondering if the Levi's want to look for like almost a full engaged fight, and they do just like that. Dash taunt. And it gets a lot of team. Oh my god, Genetics is just getting burned down. Genetics is gone. Genetics had nothing to answer to that. And a great taunt from Rong Yu kicks things off. Adapting continues the pace. Frontline for the Warriors goes down with Sod. And you've got 40 full seconds without the Warriors at full power. Left side Phoenix immediately taken down. Mid Phoenix, it's the next target. It should burn pretty quickly. Five with Fire Giant back. And TP in for Fino K. Mid Phoenix gone. Shinto chasing down Pagon, trying to turn that six into a seven. Can't quite chase him the full way. Pagon makes it back, but that's more than Adapting. you can say for Panatom and the Leviathans. The Leviathans are looking to do what only the ferrymen have been able to all year long. They're going to wipe out the Warriors on the map, and then they're going to wipe them out of this set. A 3 1 win for the boys in blue. And overall, that entire game, the Levi's looking absolutely clean. Team fights, 2v2s, 3v3s, objectives. All around, just an incredible set by the Levi's. The only yeah. game they lost was a game where they had a 4K gold lead in seven minutes or something like that. <laughs> and they just kind of ran into a bunch of bad fights in a row. But just a great day for the Levi's. The game two... Uh, was the equivalent of a cartoon running and they slipped on a banana peel real yes. hard. <laughs> Otherwise, like you said, I mean, game one, game three, game four especially, I mean, that one felt oppressive. You know, it, we had moments, especially in game one and in game three from the Warriors where it's like, man, this, this could be anybody's game, but this one, it, it just, to me, it felt like every step of the way, every new fight was just one more step further ahead. If that Pyromancer and that Gold Fury from, from early on in that game goes slightly differently, we're talking maybe a stomp in game four as well. And that's considering how much of a stomp this already was and how clean it was by the Levi's. Yeah. Like those one, two misplays, I mean, adapting into the game 10 1 9. Shinto was bullying Pegon for most of the game. Overall, just a lot of bright spots by the Levi's. Well, they had a, a stacked, I feel like, beginning first two weeks in the teams that they've had to face. But they've come out on top today, and they looked good doing it. A 3-1 win for the Leviathans over the Warriors. That's going to do it for myself and inbound. Throw it back to the desk and let them break it down for you. The Leviathans take it in four, and it's a clean four oh, yeah. at that. I, I mean, it looked like they were in control for portions of all four games, and I think Bobby said it. They, they lost a couple of bad fights in, in game number two, but other than that, I mean... I don't really know where you, where you pull on the mistakes from the Levi's. They look great. I mean, they certainly did, and I want to talk about a few things. Number one, adapting, immediately bounced back with that Thor performance, and this time around on the Susano, looked so clean. Was able to confirm so many kills. Shinto absolutely dominated the mid lane this set. Pagon did not exist as Pele. I mean, he did decent damage, but he, he had to ult out defensively 
how many times in that game, which is something you never want to do on a pick like Pele mid, because that's the benefit, right? She doesn't get bullied because she has so much pressure, so you can leave. Uh, you, you don't want to be using that ult defensively, so Shinto gets the better end of those trades. Fine OK was absolutely unkillable because, you know, you're facing a 4 Fizz comp, so you don't have to build any magical defense, and Fine OK was able to just W key. And then, of course, prioritizing wrong you to get this, this, this Athena just provides such easy setup for the squad, right? Those taunts were on point. Uh, Defender of Olympus just to give protections to Fine OK, who is already unkillable, but to be able to use that global presence to just set up for the team. It means everyone gets to play on easy mode, right? When you have an Athena, you don't have to think about, can I hit this ability? Do I have to predict jukes? It's just set up for you. Uh, the Leviathans, whatever they were doing, as far as picks and bans go, is their strategy. I mean, like, it just seemed like they got exactly what they wanted and they executed. And Slaney was walking by before last game and he said, 4-1 should have been a 3-0. Like, like, and that's the kind of confidence you need, and I gotta say, he was right. Yeah, I, I mean, I think they're right to have that confidence. We always talk about, like, how these sets form their own little mini meta, yeah. and I feel like you really did feel that in the Fix and Mans, but the Levi's, they were the ones adapting, and I think a lot of that pressure came through mid lane oh, yeah, that game, time. and we've got Shinto standing by to talk about it. That's right, I've got Shinto here, and first and foremost, man, you are the second team this year to beat the Warriors. How's it feel? Feels amazing. It feels really good, and uh, yeah, pretty much. I know we were talking about it, but the, at least for us, like the games were super fun to, to watch. You had said they were super fun to play, and you got to do a pretty wide variety of, of gods, even bringing out the Kamazots in the last game. So, what was it like, I guess, for for your team as a whole, like adapting, especially after game one to game two, and then game two to the rest of the set? Yeah, we were really confident. Even the game we lose, we were like so confident we we could win that game too. So yeah, we were just confident, and, and yeah, it was some really fun games. I do have to ask about game two, though, because it was a pretty massive lead for you guys, like really, really early in the game, and the things just went wrong. So what was it that, you, in your eyes that, that broke? Yeah, it was me kind of greedy with farm, and then Sot picked me in the raid. It was a Sot moment. It was, I didn't expect I didn't expect Sot there, so he killed me, and then he get like a big shutdown in, and then after that, Max gets solo, Max. And then, uh, yeah, it was all fall apart after that. Well, you guys end up winning this one. It's 3-1. I'm kind of curious uh, in your mind, like what's the, the future of the Leviathans looking like after you've gotten this clean this quick? Winning everything. Winning worlds, winning everything. There you go. There you have it. Winning everything. Congratulations, man. It's a fantastic win. It was fun to watch. Uh, and again, congratulations on that. And thanks for your time. So we'll throw it back to the desk and we can close this one out. Keeping it simple. Yep. Shinto uh, wants to win everything, wants to win worlds. And, and you know, everybody's everybody's got their eye on the end of the rainbow. Certainly nothing wrong with that. And I think, you know, with that with that type of confidence, that type of team play, they, they might be able to just do it. I would say so. I mean, it's still very early days and the meta shift and change, but being able to adapt quickly is, you know, the marks of a good team, right? Being able to just immediately turn around and say, this is our new play style, this is how we want to do it. Uh, and when playing at this level, I, I, I tend to agree. Well, that's one set done. We can take a look at the schedule, see what the rest of the weekend has in store for us. That's halfway through officially. We covered some matches yesterday. That's one of our matches down for today. Coming up next is the Highland Ravens going up against the Jade Dragons. One more team that we saw yesterday. The Atlantis Leviathans, though, they close out both of their sets this week in a double header for them, and they win them both 3-1, leaving the, leaving the weekend 2-0. Well, then I'd have to see what that does to their standings. I'm a little bit concerned. Like, if that doesn't put them at the top. I put oh, them baby, I think it does. It does indeed. Put them at the top, leading the wins over for the entirety of the league. Still only halfway through weekend two here at the Road to Worlds Phase 2. But the Elite 3 and 1, the Atlantis Leviathans, and importantly, only one or two teams remaining undefeated. The Styx Ferrymen on the left side in the Order Division, the Chaos Divisions, the Camelot Kings. But they still have more matches to play this weekend. They could be knocked off that undefeated streak uh, quite soon, depending on how their matchups go. But up next, we've got the Dragons versus the Highland Ravens, both third in their division, and another one of those cross-division matches. So this matchup is only going to happen once during the entire phase here. This matchup, you only get the chance to win it once. They've got to come out to play today. They definitely have to come out to play. Um, this is one of those matchups where I think both teams need wins just to try and you know start to actually get some momentum together. I think yep. 
Once you get one, it's very easy to start stringing them together. But when you're up against a squad, I would say relatively even matches the Ravens versus the Dragons. It's going to come out to not only just the momentum of like trying to get you know game number one under your belt, but I think learning a lot from what we just checked out in picks and bans here. There's a bit of a meta starting to form, and it's, a, it's exciting to watch. Play on field, who adapts to the meta, who brings their A game. There's a lot to see for set number two. But that'll do it for us on set number one. Stick around through the break for set number two. Every time I close my eyes.